How did he? I just want to see the well, checkmate the at the end. Well, the final position is very cute. Just want to see the checkmate at the end. So he goes to the C file, and his rook on G6 is kind of like hanging. Yep. And I guess he's thinking if knight takes G6, he'll play D3 to try and back rank mate. That, I already saw the moves. I feel like I'm giving you a movie spoiler if I tell you what that he played. Might be foul. Oh no, he doesn't even need to. He can go rook c1, c2 first, right? Yeah. yeah. Rook c1, rook c2. And if king goes back to d1, he's got rook d2 mate. And if king goes up to d3, he's got rook d2 mate. Oh. That was <sighs> beautiful. Yeah. That's that's more of a that's more of a game of the week for me. A rook sack and then an unusual end game checkmate. I kind of like that. I mean, it depends. All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Central. Good to be here with you today. How's Who are it? you excited to see play? How's it going, Alexandra? Did you catch any of the Eastern action today? Well, right before we went live, we were looking at how close the Armenian Eagles and Tbilisi Gentlemen's matchup were. Yeah, that They're, was crazy. Yeah, neck to neck in the standings, tied their match today super close so i love seeing that kind of action yeah that was pretty exciting um let's see if we can find any action here in the central to top to top an 8-8 battle between the number one and number two teams i guess if you ask me which matchup i'm excited for today it's got to be baden baden against the norway gnomes um who spent almost the entire season in first and second place in the central division and right now they're in first and third place so Yep, this is kind of the equivalent of the Armenia Eagles and the Tbilisi Gentlemen. So I'm excited to see how that's going to match up today. Yeah, and uh, all right. Um, the first matchup we're going to have, though, however, is going to be the Ljubljana Turtles, uh, Ninja Turtles, against the Khan Blitzstream. <clears throat> and I've always been a fan of the, of the Turtles team because I was a fan of the actual Ninja Turtles. Oh, well, that's a good reason. <clears throat> so, you know, from the very first days of the of the PCL, I thought it was so awesome that these that there was like a team of all friends who all had these like Ninja Turtle names for their handles and stuff. And uh, I was just an immediate fan of theirs. But they've really struggled this season, whereas Khan has been coming back up. Yeah. And last year, the Ljubljana Turtles made it to the final four. Yeah. It was quite the turn of events. But this year, they're just 
at huge risk of getting relegated. So very different story than they had last year, unfortunately. Yeah, they're stuck at the bottom. And um, the two French teams, both Caen and Marseille, have sort of started out really badly at the start of the season and have been surging up uh, more recently. So um, the second match we'll see today will be a real test for Marseille when they go up against a very strong Barcelona Raptors team. Mm -hmm. um, and that'll be like a matchup of styles, you know, the three super strong GMs and a very low rated board four for Marseille. And right. then a more balanced lineup for the Barcelona Raptors who've got like a board four who's, you know, scored two or more points many times this season. Yeah, Alejandro Diaz has been doing incredibly well. It'll be fun because we also get to see MVL play, and I know there's a lot of MVL fans in the chat, so hopefully he'll give us some exciting games. We've seen upsets from him in the past, and he just plays super fast, super confident, so regardless, his games are very fun to watch. Yeah, everyone always all, always tunes into the Central because Maxime's always playing. Exactly. <laughs> so um, already we've got some weird action here in the game between Mathieu Cornet and Laura Yunuk. You, you want to pronounce that name again, please? <laughs> uh, Cornet? Uh, no, I'm, I'm just kidding. You said it very nice. It's like the female the version of an ice cream cone in French. Right. Um, kind of a cute name. Yeah, and he's played like a very weird opening here with A6 on move 3. And um, I'm surprised by white playing g3 because that means the bishop's not going to the diagonal that black obviously wants to fight about when they play b5. So that's just like a slightly odd um, choice to me to play g3 there. And so Cornet advances with this b5 move and seems to immediately get an okay position, I would think, out of this opening. Yeah, I like Cornet's position here. It seems like he was able to quickly take out his bishops, castle, and his plans in the final position are pretty intuitive. Eventually, he wants to push c5, develop his knight, open file. I can't say anything too bad about his style here. Yeah. And in my own games with black, I sometimes struggle to find a square for every one of my pieces. Either I get behind a development or I have a space disadvantage or something. There's all kinds of things that can plague you when you play black. Right. Um, and so one measure of whether an opening is successful for black is like, do you have a square for each piece? And honestly, if you do, um, you're already pretty happy, I think. Like if you can find a square for each piece, that's that's bliss for black. And would you say that's very different for most players when they're playing white? For example, often it might be a similar idea where white is also trying to get their pieces to a good square. Right. With white, you might be a little bit more ambitious. Like you might also be preventing, trying to prevent black from achieving that or trying to like create some kind of positional advantage or do something in the time that black's sort of getting into the game and catching up with you. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. Now, do you see a fourth game started or do you only see three games started at first in this match? I only see three so far. Okay. Um, there's an interesting position between Yura Borisek and Kevin Bordy as well, if we want to take a look there. All right. The board four <laughs> for the Khan Blitzstream. And I think he's also the board four for my fantasy team this week. Um, so, Kevin, I hope I hope you're feeling feeling it today. Yeah, we can maybe check. I hope one of them didn't forfeit. Sometimes this happens when you don't see a fourth game. Yeah, it could be um, It could be that there's a player missing. I know that in the Pacific on Tuesday, the board won for the Kangaroos was late by like two rounds. Right. Um. So they forfeited a couple games. Okay, well, I just messaged our PCL channel, so we'll get more on that soon. Of course, they'll but give us But until the then... Um, Kevin Bordy, Yura Borisek, what a crazy position. Yeah. Um, so White has only developed one piece, a queen, um, which is kind of fun. Obviously, some of the other pieces were traded off here. But who would you say has a better position here? It's tough to say, but my instinct would be White by a little bit because the Black King is kind of in a bad area mm -hmm. um the nice thing for black is that white has no development right so it means at the moment black's not threatened and they've maybe got some time to develop something with their pieces um 
I mean, I went all the way back to move four and it was still a weird looking position, Alexandra. Like, I think I would have to go back to move three to sort of show understand people to properly here. understand what happened with this opening, um, which is a which is a Staunton gambit in the uh, in the Dutch. So E4 on move two. Um, very, very aggressive from Bordy, but I think he's uh, I think he's known to play aggressively. He is not intimidated that he's playing a GM. He probably prepared this line. It's good to play sometimes in rapid things that you don't usually play. It catches your prey. It catches your opponent off guard. Hey, sometimes call them your getting... prey if you want. That's yeah, that's the I, idea I, of I catching them, right? <laughs> you caught me there. Oh. All right. So um, Borisek did something that I would have liked to do, which is C6, sort of undermining white center while white doesn't have the pieces out to really fight the hardest for the center. Mm -hmm. um, but Bordy also did something that I would like, which is with bishop d3, he got a development tempo with this threat. Black had to play this move rook h8, which is not in any way desirable. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, now he's going to be able to keep developing for white. Right. Um, and even though white is behind on development here, he's not down any material. He can easily castle queenside, bring his knight to f3. So I don't think he has much to be worried about here. No. So, I mean, the thing that could in some way go wrong for him is Black could play like D5 and E5 and F5 and stuff at some point, right? Because right. what Black chose to do with their time was undermine the white center. And so White's traded his E and D pawns for Black's B and G pawns, which is like a weird trade to arrange. But... That leaves white with the possibility of ending up low on central presence eventually. Right. Well, I, think... I mean, he oh, yeah. has to have some compensation for mm -hmm. the terrible king position here. So I yeah. do like this plan you're pointing out of later taking advantage of the fact that he has more central pawns and pushing them and maybe putting some pressure on the B file with more than just his rook. Yeah. I think when Bordy was thinking about knight f3, he was probably wondering if he wanted to castle queenside or kingside. Because, like, if he could castle queenside... Oh, yeah, our our very um, observant viewers are pointing out that in the score that we have up here, it shows Khan with a one-point lead. So we can kind of imagine oh, okay. that there was a forfeit win for Khan. That's a logical yep, what, conclusion. Yep, the Ninja Turtle was late, unfortunately, but it's okay. Yeah. It's, it's just a bad start. Yeah. So I think what Bordy was thinking was, should I castle queenside or kingside? If I castle queenside, I can throw more stuff at the exposed black king. But I also have to face counterplay on the B file. If I try and castle kingside, then I know I'm the only one with the better placed king. Right. But so uh, rook b8, he castled queenside after all, queen b6, making a weakness on the queenside. And, yep. uh, so he made a weakness on the queenside. Thankfully, Black doesn't have a dark squared bishop to take advantage <laughs> of those of those weak dark squares. Yeah. Um, again, a5 or c5, potentially trying to open up the b file, does look like it could be scary. Yeah. I do like the move he played with queen b4 because it's mm -hmm. looking towards queen a3. Do you ever play bug house? I have played bug house, mostly over the board, though. Okay. In bug house, you would just start dropping stuff on c3 and b2, right? Pretty right, much. right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, that so would be pretty So the queen's funny. headed there, and you'd like to have a bishop for black. You wouldn't want to have a dark square bishop for black if you were Kevin, yep. Yeah, I, I, if I was white, I'd say, please, no heavies. Uh, also, no pawns. Also, no diags. Uh, <laughs> you just, just be just telling your me. opponent, your partner. Well, I guess if it was white's turn to move, then... Yeah. That's also a pretty nice situation. It would depend house. whose move it was, right? You'd play yeah, queen exactly. takes f7 check and then drop a knight on h6. Um, oh, all right, the other game in this match is uh, David Stefanich as white against Maxime Lagarde. And um, Stefanich is board four for the Turtles, playing against board one for Khan. Mm -hmm. So that means based on the pairings that we're seeing... It looks like the Turtles were missing one of their top boards in the first round. Um, uh, it, yeah, they were missing their second board. And it looks like Stefanich is kind of playing a, a solid position as white. He's got equal material against the really high-rated GM. And uh, 
you know, he should be looking to to hold this game. Um. Yeah, I, now that we realize it was their second board that was gone, that's even worse for them since they were expected to win that game. Exactly. In the first round, you don't want to lose one of those one board one or board two against lower rated players. That said, the Kangaroos came back and won um, their match um, where they were missing their top board for two rounds. Right. I mean, we're not saying there's no hope, um, but on top of that, they are very far behind the Berlin Bears in the standings. Berlin mm -hmm. Bears have 85 points. They only have, well, 85.5 and 60.5. So yeah. I don't know if they, if it's even possible for them to not get relegated at this point. Obviously, yeah. technically it is, but extremely unlikely. Right. It would take quite, quite a winning streak at this point. The other yeah. match has gotten underway. Do you want to see what opening Maxime's playing? Yeah, of course. All right. He's playing how Alejandro Alvarado Diaz. <laughs> What's that? Oh, how surprised would you have been if I said, no, I don't want no. to see <laughs> I would have been pretty surprised. That would like break my flow as a commentator. I'm like, so you want to see like Maxime? And you're like, not today. Nah, Let's not, not watch today. his games today. Too Everybody... much Maxime. Moving on. <laughs> yeah. Be like, uh, do I argue with my co-host? Or right. do I just say okay? And then everyone in chat is like, what are these two doing? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um. But okay, so we are looking at his opening here. Uh, do you play the Sicilian as black? I do. Okay, so maybe you can explain a little bit about the ideas here. Well, it's a weird, it's a weird Sicilian with a bishop on c4 that got traded by knight a5. So I've got sort of minimal experience with this structure. I would say the bishop on c6 looks really good, especially after white plays e4, e5. Mm -hmm. um that's not based on playing the sicilian but just like you know if you've got an unopposed General bishop chess yeah got an unopposed bishop like what you really want is that e4 pawn to be gone and white just moved it so i'm like cool right um, and now your knight can get to f5 as well yeah i think white's idea was they wanted to force something with knight e4 they're trying to crack black's dark squares because right. that that is appropriate when you've got the knight pair and your opponent's got the bishop pair you want to create weaknesses for them on the dark square so that eventually you create a scenario where you sort of like outpost in some weakness and they can't handle it um but to crack the dark squares or to work on the dark square sometimes you open up the light square so you have to sort of evaluate what's actually coming out of it and if it's going to work out for you or not i right. would be surprised if this works out for white in this case yeah, I mean, there are definitely advantages and drawbacks to every type of pawn push. But in this case, black just doesn't seem forced to open up anything. And as soon as white moves that e-pawn, both of black's bishops are free. So what's stopping black from just castling or playing normal moves here? Well, the d6 pawn is hanging, I guess. And if knight f5... White's probably thinking about g4. And I right. think that Maxime must have been aware of that, and that's why he calculated for a little bit before playing knight f5. I mean, if he had a pawn on h5, I think he would have mm -hmm. just played like knight f5 and not wasted any of his precious time. Right. Um, yeah, so Alejandro has a little bit more counterplay than yeah. initially expected. So I think the um, big question is, what's he going to do if White plays g4 now? Right. I think it's well, going to get pretty crazy instantly if White goes for that. Yeah, there's a lot of options for black. You can play knight d4, knight h4. He can take on e4, but I don't think he wants to give up his bishop there. So I'm curious which line hmm. Maxi is interested in playing. Yeah, so Alejandro played bishop c3. Um, I mean, it's still logically fighting for the dark squares, looking to maybe trade dark squared bishops at some point and then set up a knight on the dark squares. Right. But I wonder what was wrong with g4, because that really looked like a, a very testing move. Right. Um, hmm. So maybe bishop c3 is also stopping knight d4. Right. Um, because after you play knight d4, white's not going to be able to take on d6 so easily anymore because of the bishop pin. Mm -hmm. So potentially that could be what he was worried about since he did play bishop c3 here. I suppose the move also clears the way for either rook d1 or castle's queenside. Right. Um, which would have put more pressure on d6, but Maxime's not even waiting for that, and he goes d5 immediately himself, um, sacking the c5 pawn and, and, and starting some mayhem. 
Oh, 96 check looks really good here. Oh, yeah. Does it? I don't know if after knight takes, pawn takes, um, you, you have a check with the queen. Does it just break up black's castle? I guess the king would come here to defend the bishop, and those things might yeah, trade. Yeah. And, and maybe... I guess the drawback is that maybe black isn't in that much trouble, and then yeah. he's going to win the pawn back on d6 and end up being up a pawn. Right. So maybe you can cover up with that. But similar to knight d6, there's also the move knight f6 to calculate. Um, mm -hmm. I'm impressed by how many things Maxime must have considered in very little time to go for this. Right. And you immediately see Alejandro Alvarado Diaz, who's a great player, but you see him spending a little bit more time evaluating these options. Like he can't make that kind of decision at the same rate as, uh, as Maxime, I think. Well, which is fair, you know, given the, the difference in levels here. Yeah. Um, but Alejandro Diaz has been one of my favorite board fours of the season. He's doing extremely well. So I hope yeah. he'll be able to pull some type of upset here. Yeah. And I'm not sure what's wrong with taking on C5 either. That's a good question. Uh, knight takes C5. Uh, let's see. I mean, maybe D4 is the scary looking thing because mm -hmm. I'm... Yeah, I, I mean, guess D4's... it's just the most aggressive move. So exactly. It's the move that attacks that. something, the move that might win something, and then white could right. play bishop b4 or bishop d2. And yeah. you know, I still don't I still don't know what what the problem is, but and I think c5 looks good. Must be something. Knight d6, we agreed, probably not so great because he'll lose the pawn. Yeah. Um I think knight d6 we've eliminated, knight c5, big question because it just takes a pawn. <laughs> mm. What else can he do? Um, I mean, he could try something with rook d1 or queenside castling so that black can't take the knight. It's yeah. another way to defend this threat. I don't really yeah. like rook d1. Um, I mean, how about knight c5 and if d4 then play rook d1? So you're like, I right. already stole one pawn, I'm going to steal the next pawn. Yeah. That looks interesting. Um, rook d1 right after? Yeah. I guess the... Oh, no, in that case, the queen could go to b6 and go attack the knight and the bishop at the same right. time. And we got multiple things attacked. Right. Yeah. That could be that could be too fancy. That could be too fancy. Right. Um, wow. But like, Alejandro's really having to think about it, and he finally he grabs the pawn. I mean, if you can't see what's wrong with it, sometimes you have to take it. I mean. Yeah, I mean, he was in trouble, not in trouble, but he was getting attacked in the center anyways, so he mm -hmm. might as well get some compensation for it because the other lines look similar to this, except that he didn't get that extra pawn. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, certainly, I, like, retreating the knight somewhere to, like, F2 or G3 or something would have been really bad, right? Then he doesn't get a pawn. Maxime would have still played D4 and opened his bishop, so. So right. Maxime just sacks the pawn in castles. And sometimes you're, like, looking so hard for what's his tactic, what's the disaster, and they're just planning to, like, sack a pawn and play the position. So right. then you're like, why did I spend four minutes looking for a tactic? I could have just taken the pawn and, like, played the game. That's true, but you have to calculate it anyway. You yeah. know, uh, it, it's better than when you calculate something and they do something that you didn't take into account. Then you're sweating. I'd yeah. say this is the best possible. This is the scenario. best possible. He got the pawn and he got away scot free. There's no tactic. Yeah, exactly. Now he just needs to like castle and organize his pieces and attack d4 with them. So knight on b3, king to the king side, I would say. Um, and prepare to defend c2 because black's thinking about like you know queen b6 bishop b5 trying to go after the c2 square hmm. i think i would still prefer to play white here why i guess i like playing with material advantage and i think that after i get my knight to d3 it seems to just keep the position pretty safe here. I don't like having to play against the bishop pair, but the center is mostly closed up. 
Um, yeah, I mean, right now you're playing against one bishop. The one on g7 is not a big problem. The one on c6 is a yeah. is a monster. Um, yes. And I would think like your main two priorities are covering c2 and putting some pressure on d4. Right. Um, because those what? can kind of go like hand in hand. Like if you get the opponent to spend a lot of time defending d4, then they can't attack c2 as much. Um, so. Oh, and that's terrible. Like Oh gosh, what just happened? That's terrible. Bishop b4. He could have gone there in one move, and he went bishop d2, and then bishop b4. Yeah, that's not a good sign. Um, yeah, no. It's, it's not a, a terrible move. I mean, it's pretty active. It just seems like he wasted tempo. Yeah, I don't think I don't think you can waste a tempo against Maxime when he's bringing out his pieces. Chat would... is bullying one of our amazing mods, Crazy Coffee Man, Crazy Coffee Man, by telling him coffee is just dirty water. Crazy Coffee Man, we got your back. You do what you need to do. You're a mod. We're gonna look the other way. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. So here comes the knight into e3, and uh, yeah. Me personally, I'm all I'm all disapproval about losing a tempo against Maxime. I was already scared because of how fast Maxime was playing. Like if I were white, I would be like trembling the whole time. I yeah, the knight is so nicely placed on e3 too. I guess it makes sense to take the rook and be up the exchange, but maybe he doesn't even have to do that. Yeah, I mean he didn't even he didn't even try to save that rook. He was just like, whatever, you got me. Oh man, um, yeah, yeah, this is not looking good anymore. I'm curious what happened to the the game we were looking at earlier between the turtles, yeah, and the blood streams. So All right, end. let's click over and have a look. Looks like Black took over the center, which was one of their ideas, but uh, but Kevin avoided getting attacked on the queen side, so that was nice. Um, Overall, I would say once you reach this phase of the game, Black's control of the center is going to be more important than their king position, which is not much of a factor anymore. Right, and Black also has that passed D pawn, um, and even though White's king is safer because it has those two pawns in front of it, I think Black could also get some counterplay on the king. So all of a sudden, I now like Euro's position better. Okay. Yeah, well, we're in agreement then. Oh, gosh, Kevin's got a minute, too. He's got a minute and a half against seven and a half minutes. So that that can also tell the story sometimes. Yeah, that's true. You can tell that Kevin Bordy has had to think quite a little bit, so clearly his attack wasn't quite as clear as initially planned. Clicking over to another game in this match, we've got Mathieu Cornet's position developing. Um, the position would be sort of a symmetrical pawn structure, except at some point recently he played f5 to gain more, you know, space and influence. That means he's feeling his position is pretty strong and that this pawn will give him more possibilities rather than more weaknesses. Right. I mean, like anytime you push a pawn, it's, it's doing both. And the question is, is your opponent going to get at your weaknesses or are you the one who's aggressive and going to try and push them back? And I guess he's feeling like the C file is really good. And his outposts on d5 and e4 and, are and good. And Laura's pieces are quite awkward position in the moment because those rooks aren't normally connected. Why is there a knight on d3 and now why is that knight pinned on d3? And what about the a3 pawn? Yeah, <laughs> that so knight must have been here. planning to go to e5 or c5 and just never got there. You know, stuff came up. Yeah, you know. It's like in one of those Settle movies, down. right? where the character's yeah. never done their dream. They're like, when I was 18, I dreamed of traveling the world. Now I'm 63 and I'm still in my hometown. Yeah, exactly. That's the life story of that poor knight on D3. Yeah. So rook E1 at least stops the threat of queen takes D4, queen takes D4, knight E2, which would have been devastating. <laughs> yeah, that would have been a pretty embarrassing way to lose, but... But the yeah, rook might I, still be trapped to a move like e5 or something. I don't know. This could, this could go wrong. Yeah, e5 looks pretty scary here. Um, maybe not yet, because 
white can take the pawn and i'm not sure oh i don't know maybe knight white can't take the pawn yeah but i don't think it works five seems two. relatively safe yep you're right i wouldn't take with the knight yet because of the pin but taking with the queen seems okay mm -hmm. yeah um. okay so no cr no killer move just yet there instead the knight goes to a2 and uh i think Machia is thinking one rook is not enough he wants to get both of them into the to these ranks here oh wow a queen trade that that may allow him to win the b4 pawn as he's thinking here i think that Mathieu would have won the b4 pawn regardless though that was kind of what he was aiming at huh yeah um so i i guess laura must have felt like she didn't have much play here because her yeah. position was so cramped I don't know if trading queens when you're down two pawns is the right way to do it, but yeah, she didn't have that many good options, so it's hard to judge too hard here. Yep. So let's pop over. That's probably going to be a two pawn down end game. She's going to suffer in. Let's pop over to Maxime because there's been a lot of action in this game with oh, with Alejandro yeah. Diaz. The knight on e3 chose not to even take the rook on d1. Um, instead, Maxime decided to trade on f3 and grab the c2 pawn. <laughs> That was the big weakness that he really wanted. It makes his deep on much stronger. So, right. So then some tactics ensued. He took on b4, kind of threatening to win everything. Knight to b7. And the queen comes in. Check, check. Knight on e1. Oof. There's a blow. And Maxime wow. wins the game. I was just quickly. catching up to it. What yeah, it's, it's hard to catch up because Maxime's finish. like blitzing out this game. But. The knight couldn't be taken because of a pawn d2 fork, so the queen moved. Then his queen comes in, still leaving the knight hanging there to three pieces. D2, yeah. rook takes c1, and he's back rank mating him. Would you say that this game has some chance for game of the week? Mm, only insofar as Maxime's a big name. I think it was a little bit one-sided and not not quite as sacrificial um i mean it was it was a sweet kill but i think we'll see some games where people have to Aiming sack their own stuff not impressed okay <laughs> we'll take it we'll take it i like the honesty i mean you have um, to realize like the last match that i broadcast there was the game between naroditsky and cameron wheeler where he had his queen attacked and in response self-forked his own bishop and knight and like had like had like four out of five of his pieces hanging so no way and my specialty in chess is self-forking your pieces to an enemy pawn i think that's like the height of aesthetics self for self-forking your pieces to an enemy pawn yeah so like you put one piece where their pawn could take it right and yeah. they don't take it and then you put another piece onto the square so that pawn is okay. now forking you. Like, it didn't come and fork your pieces. You placed your pieces where their pawn could take either piece. Got it, got it. Okay, now I, now I know what you That's like the about. height of aesthetics in chess. That's a I, very fun way to play it. I, I totally once agree. managed to self-fork all four of my pieces at the same time. So two of them to one pawn of my opponents and the other two to another pawn of my opponents. Something tells me you didn't have the best result that game. Or How do you know I lost that game? game? Or it was your favorite game you've ever played. It was one of what my favorite games, games I ever lost, but... So I was right. Yeah, how did you figure that out? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Somebody's saying, Jorg played a French. Please switch game. Don't make me time you out, buddy. No, no dissing the French, please. <laughs> oh, man. They're dissing the French and Georg and our taste in games. I know. It's just... It Ouch. hurts. I mean, this is a big matchup, right? This is Georg against Captain Casanova. This is this is the bottom bottom and snowballs against the Norway gnomes. The the battle of the Nordic snowy people. The battle of the Nordic snowy people. Yep. Yeah. Who would win, magical snowballs or gnomes? I feel like it's hard to hurt snowballs. Yeah, but you would think that if gnomes had a special power other than being small and weak. The special power would be being immune to like cold things, right? 
I would hope so. Like my daughter's always telling me like when she's just like freezing in short sleeves and it's like raining and like 40 degrees and she's like, I'm Elsa. The snow doesn't bother me <laughs> or the cold that's, doesn't that's bother me. That's actually adorable. <laughs> so I think the gnomes should also be immune. So right. maybe it'll be an 8-8 tie after 16 draws. <laughs> what what a result that would be no one can hurt anybody oh man okay well maybe we can look at a game that is a little bit further down. sure let's Let see. see if clicking there's any around. games that are close to finishing up clicking around there's like a crazy bishop ending between laurent fresinet and carlos diaz camayonga who's a super strong board three for um for the uh, raptors that okay, match now tied 1-1. One, one. Um, okay. Kevin Bordy lost his game to, to Donatello, Yuri Borisek. So the Turtles got on the board this round, which is maybe the most they could have hoped for from their first round. Right. Um, but yeah, this bishop ending is interesting to me. Because if white wraps up that pawn on e3 somehow before the black king can get into the game then we could see a really big upset here. Yeah. And again, in this type of position, with both bishops being on the dark squares, that's a, a huge game changer because the king and the bishop can coordinate to attack a pawn um, versus if the pawn was on a light square and the bishop was on a light square, then you could just not get it no matter what. So... Um, yeah, I mean, do you cover a lot of end games when you do these or do you try and stick to like the, the checkmates and stuff? I like doing both. Both? Okay. I think end games are like the classical music that you enjoy and okay. checkmates are kind of then fast, you, then faster Then you remix jazz. it with a, and you get yeah. something a little faster. Exactly. You need a bit of both. All right, so let's just figure this one out then because it looks like a cool one to me. I think if the bishop retreats somewhere random, then white plays king takes e3 and pretty much wins. Right. So I would so think he can that, only go on h6? I would think he would just go to h6, and then now his king has a long route into the game. So does white have time to go hunting the queen side with king e4? Huh. Just go king e4 right away? Um he probably does, honestly. Uh, I think the only way Black could try to get out his king here is by pushing the G pawn. Okay. Say something like G6. Yeah, F maybe even G5. The white could still take on G6, so it could end up the same. So let's bring the Black king out, play King D5 mm -hmm. for white, King F5 for Black, King C4. And then Black could go to G4, but he could also centralize powerfully with King E4. And then... I feel like we made a mistake when we ran our king over to the C pawn now. Yeah, it seems a little bit more risky than it needed to be. The king on e4 looks like he's dominating, and the e pawn is suddenly monstrous. So that's a good example of how important centralization is. Like, white traded that early centralization for a pawn, and then black's got the centralization, they're probably winning. So that's a bad approach from white. Right. So let's back it up a little bit then. Let's back it up again. So g6, let's look at that position again. What do I do? I almost have to take it. Okay, I think maybe F6? taking it wasn't our mistake, but no. the mistake was moving the king from the center because right now with the king on e4, there's no way that black can move forward. He can't go to g5, he can't go to f5. Right. Um, I like the idea of d5 and bishop g3 putting pressure on the c7 pawn. Wow, Black's just played bishop e7, conceding king takes e3. So now... Well, this is easier than the line we were looking at. Now it looks very easy for white. White can play d5 here, then bishop c5 to keep the king out of c4. Hmm. Can he just move up his king here as well and continue with the plan we were yeah. looking at. So if we go and king e4, black maybe has to try c6. I mean, you can't be yeah. down two pawns in a same color no, bishop no, no. ending. He, like, he might as well just just give up. And but can't he just c6, push d5 d5, after? exactly. That's great technique, Alex. Um, if black takes, they've lost. If they play c5 to keep us off for another move, then we go king e5 and push d6 and win. Right. It's just completely over. Yeah, this, this looks 
Dunzo. Yeah. Can I say that? Yeah. I think you can. <laughs> I mean, if you're wrong, nobody's going to mind anyway, right? Then they can just be like, oh, we're better than the commentators. Right, right, right. Um, which which is feels good. Yeah. Hey, he just played d5. Um, I don't think there was anything wrong with your king e4 idea, but there might be this nothing seems, wrong with d5 either. Yeah, this seems like a different version of it where he just wants to play king d4 and grab the pawn first. So he, Black, he has quite a few winning lines here. So if Black plays bishop f6, I think he'll probably play bishop g3 and right. consider trading his age pawn for the c pawn to get the other pawn going. Um, that could get a little messy, though, a little double-edged. If Black plays bishop c5, I think his idea is king f4. And basically, by keeping him out of d4, you're letting him into g5. And I don't think the black bishop can keep tabs on every white root here. Uh, so I think black, maybe bishop f6? Nope, another it's surprise. Like bishop d6. Bishop yeah. d6. No king d4 white from white? King f3 instead of king d4. This is very bizarre. I guess he's trying to trade off the bishop. That's what he's doing, because he says he's a pawn up, but... Oh, wow. Yeah, but oh, this he is... can actually take on c7 now, because his king is close enough to the h5 pawn, right? Oh, yeah, he can. It's just, I feel it's a little bit messy to give black the pass to h pawn. A li... Got it. Ooh. So it seems like your technique when you're in an endgame and you're better is just to play the cleanest, safest version of it. You don't want to allow your opponent any chances, right? If I'm commenting, yes. If I'm actually playing, my <laughs> endgame technique looks like blundering and losing two pawn up endgames oh, okay. somehow. You're... I mean, while, I know that's not the case. while wondering, like, can I stop his counterplay this way? Is this the safest way? And then, like, I didn't see some other counterplay. So there's oh, my man. ideal technique and my actual. I think that's the case for everybody. When when you're doing commentary and you can discuss the moves and you can play them out, you're not stressed. It's a different story. than Then B3 trading the weak pawn. I am quite confused by the technique. I mean, obviously, white's still up a very, very healthy... Protected pass pawn on d5. So he's still looking good, but I don't right. quite. I'm going to say that white is very confident since they have a lot of different techniques that work here. Mm -hmm. um, even though he traded off the weak pawn, he does have now, you know, this chain of pawns, b right. pawn, c pawn, d pawn, that are really hard to defend against. And he ha he's less careful than he would be in a opposite color bishop endgame because he knows these are normally winning. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's too far to say he's been thinking about this, but I would feel a bit more relaxed if I was him. Yeah. Maybe he's thinking if he puts this bishop on like g3 or h2, it'll watch the black h pawn while helping him to queen. What you don't want to do right. is play d6 and lock your bishop on c7 where it can't do two jobs. So I right. think what he what he should want to do is put that bishop on like h2, bring his king up to e4, and then try and just like queen with the two pawns. And yeah, probably the h pawn is not really any counterplay, so he can just do that. Yeah. So maybe this is exactly like the technique that I don't think of. Um, I mean, your techniques are winning as well. It's just a little bit different, so. Okay, um, I, I'm also looking between the other games to see if there's anything interesting happen, happening. Right. Um, let's, okay. Yeah, I'm seeing a bunch of pretty interesting positions. Ooh, one yeah. boring one. <laughs> what about um, David Klein and Felis yep. Osmandoja? Okay. So David Klein, we have not mentioned the Amsterdam Mosquitoes yet today, but the Amsterdam Mosquitoes mm -hmm. won um quite quite convincingly an extremely strong battle royale ahead of the marshals and the eagles who are you know two of the toughest team outside teams outside of their division right and they and have been on a streak that's propelled them all the way up into second place in the division um yeah i i mean i think that their battle royale performance showed that they have a different type of skill set where they could play really well against players in their rating range mm -hmm. so it is a bit different than when they're playing these league games playing all of the different boards on the team that being said i don't want to take away from the amazing rise in standings they've had recently yeah i mean also it can be said that the lineup they played in 
in that um, in that battle royale was a bit different than usual. They had Loic Van Welly, who scored an amazing five and a half out of seven, and has not played many matches for them. Is not playing today, and today if they win. They might be the first team to win a PCL match without a player over 2,500 because their team is like 2,490, 2,490, 2,480, 2,430 or something. It's it's an all sub 2,500 team. Several players who've performed above that so far this season. A lot of overperformers like Froelich, Liam Froelich has been mm-hmm. very good for them. Um, he's matched up against Grandmaster Niklas Huschenbeth right now and seems to have a pretty equal position unless he's winning with this pin somehow. Yeah, and but. I'm also going to see their standings. Uh, sorry, their performance and see how they've been doing. Yeah. But um yeah, I think I think they that would be kind of cool to make history as the first team to win um a PCL match without a player over 2500. That would be amazing i totally agree um Client's yes position, they are which... performing over 2500 but no rating there so yeah yeah I, I did my i did my prep you know for the fantasy chess i looked up every you did. You every did. single player in every single match and their performance rating okay so who's on your team in this week's fantasy league so i've got the top two boards of the migraines um which is not which was risky because the raptors overperformed so much but, you know, Fresine and, and Vachier Legrave are so good. But you see how risky it is because in the very first game, it looked like, um, I think it might already be over that Fresine got upset and lost that Bishop ending because I'm not seeing the game anymore. So that yeah, may have yeah. been a bad White pick. Just, he resigned. Um... And then I think I took boards three and four of the Khan Blitzstream. So I think I took Paul Velton and um and kevin bordy who also Paul lost Belton, in the first round okay. so so i don't have many points yet today <laughs> well i'm just making a note of them so we'll see how your players are doing here ah. all right um so, so talking a little bit about the current position we have here right the klein game just as you sent us to it <laughs> white sacked a knight so that was pretty good pretty good timing That's, from you th- thank you I, I had a you know feeling something crazy was gonna happen so white sacked a knight which means that he has to have some type of winning attack here or he's just gonna lose later on um yeah my, I mean, my initial gut says his king is boxed in enough and has enough pieces that he shouldn't be worried what is your gut say so far yeah i mean the david klein's king looks pretty decently covered at the moment and i almost feel like knight f5 was more of a desperation than like a like a thrilling attack like i think i think when klein played f5 white was starting to feel a little bit boxed in like he can never take on b4 because of knight d4 his king's stuck in the back rank by this h3 pawn and he's just starting to feel a little bit overwhelmed about possible pressure against e4 and his king and make sort of like a positional knight sacrifice that probably won't be enough. I agree. Um, Ooh, and Klein's on the attack already. I mean, he's got the extra... He's absorbed a P-sack two moves ago, and he's already threatening checkmate. (laughs) So things are looking pretty good for the Mosquitoes in this game. What about... No, actually, hang on. Still looking between the other games. We can also stay here for a little bit longer if you want to see David Klein finish him off. But yeah, I found the final he's... position of the bishop ending we were looking at before to confirm it for people. And maybe this is the picture of what technique's supposed to look like. He moved the pawn up to c6, defended by the d5 pawn. d6, bishop g3. He's just going to play d7 and bishop h4. And either you let him queen or you trade bishops and his king takes the h5 pawn. So he's like, the king is just escorted right up there. Well, that was pretty cleanly done. All right, yeah. I learned something. What did you learn? What was the takeaway here? <laughs> the takeaway was I'm too obsessed with trying to like win a weak pawn my opponent has, so I don't really consider so much options where you trade the weak pawn. Like that C4 pawn, I'm almost counting it as mine. You know when you're counting chickens yeah. and stuff? Yes, I'm like, yes. I'm like, I'm going to get that thing for free. Like, I'm not willing to trade it for something. I Like, that's mine, and I have to get it. Um, it's fair. And 
And I don't know if I would have considered like a king march to the side of the board because I, I definitely value centralization a lot with the kings. Um, so it's just he used like two ideas that are kind of outside of the list of candidate plans I would have come up with. I would have come up with three or four plans and hesitated between them till I was out of time. But those plans <laughs> would not even have included the plan that he used. I'm going to save this end game. Um, I think it's one of those instructive end games where you're better and you have to figure out a nice plan. And this was very nicely done. Yeah, it is a good one for teaching. Yeah. Um, so I'm looking about... at Dimitri Kolar's destroying Lars Oscar okay, Hauge. Amazing. I was looking at this game as well. Bishop G4. Oops. Did we both uh... miss that? And by both, I mean Dimitri and me, not you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. Let's just blame it on the players, right? Well, I honestly still like Dimitri's position here with his two knights, that even if he ends up being down in exchange, I'd probably still prefer black here. That being said, it did seem unnecessary to allow bishop g4 because um, Dimitri could have waited a move, moved his queen out of the pin, and then played knight b3 after. Yeah. I think he saw e4 and he just thought, what an abysmal move. You just killed your bishop on f3. I'm just guessing because that's what I thought. So okay. this could be totally, totally wrong. You know, you're not going to see into the into the mind of a strong player through my mind. But I see e4. I'm like, idiot, killing your own bishop on f3. What a wow. fool move. I, and you weaken the d4 square. Cool. I'm just going to outpost two knights on the d file on you. And oh I'm not gosh. even going to have to calculate this game. And then white plays bishop g4. And I'm like, oops, I didn't calculate this game. <laughs> This should be the kind of commentary you say out loud as you're playing your own games, you know? Yeah. Let us into the mind of David Proust. Yeah. Well, I, I do it occasionally when I stream. It's pretty ugly. And then I'm like, I'm low on time. I'm low on time. I'm low on time. What should I do? What should I do? And people are like, is that really how you calculate? It's like, yeah, that's why I'm just moving pieces to squares that are attacked. <laughs> I, I do panic in time pressure as well, so it's very understandable. Um, okay, well, so... Yeah. So I mean, he killed his bishop, but he killed his bishop by like taking the rook. I yeah. mean, I don't think I don't think knight f four, which he's sort of like he's threatening, like I'm gonna go knight f four, but I don't think it's gonna work after rook d eight. I just don't see how black would save this position. So I I think it's now safe to say that Dimitri probably blundered in this position. Mm -hmm. Um. So if bishop, they had a very nice game. If bishop c eight, he can't even take it back. I don't think because of rook takes d three cleaning up as well um so on bishop c8 he must be planning to play knight d4 before recapturing right and then the question is has he trapped this queen if she goes to d2 he's got knight f3 so maybe she goes to b1 yeah, and now he could like play knight f4 the only option. or some i don't know how Wild, knight f3 or do anything no it's just a feel good check and well knight f3 king h1 it could go to h4 but then there's still bishop g4 which i just instinctively i don't feel like i like it makes more sense to allow bishop g4 than to take the bishop yeah just get that bishop off the board so rook takes c8 okay so this 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 trade has happened on c8 and now he's played rook c8 and if white wants to sort of simplify his life he can trade on d3 Whoa, so Lars just took back the the knight. He's he didn't worry too much about keeping the exchange. He just wanted to take off the pressure. Mm -hmm. Which is understandable. Yeah. I don't like those knights and queens pointing towards my king either. Yeah, I mean, even after the blunder, the position was basically equal rather than lost, right? Because that knight yeah. on d three was so strong, that plus the C pawn was always going to be worth a rook. So Lars wanted to simplify it. He just took on d three, he offered a draw. Dimitri's yeah. probably going to decline it. I mean, I'm sure he's a little shook up that he blundered bishop g4. But, but... he should still try to force his position. Yeah. I mean, he, when your opponent offers you a draw, you feel like, hey, he's scared of me. I want to push a little bit. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's an equal position. and He's the higher rated player by 100 points. Right. And but unless what? bishop g4 really rattled his confidence, he should think that he's the stronger player. Right. And even though the material is equal here, I like Black's position better without looking at it. And then when I start to look deeper to think about why do I instinctively like Black's position better, he obviously has more space on the queen side. 
his knight is on d4 already not to mm -hmm. say that white's knight can't go on to d5 as well but that yeah. would open up the c file for the rook so okay. it just seems that his minor pieces are better placed yeah. so far that's a good point he may actually still have some advantage here basically because if white mirrors the knight position, then the C file for his rook is better than the D file for white's rook. So however white plays it, it seems like black still has something. Um, I noticed the Berlin Bears put up two points already against the Mosquitoes. So they're off oh. to a small lead. Oh, but David we were just Klein, talking about how, how well the Mosquitoes are doing. Um, but David Klein's, yeah, equalizing it right now. So that's two to two. Yeah. Okay. I think, um, I think the Bears might be slightly favored in this match today despite the mosquitoes being the much the much right. more I mean, on the top mosquitoes team. have had inconsistent team lineups and then this week it's a good point yeah it looks like leonardo connected so the turtles are all here now so they just lost one game to to one guy being late and that's not going to decide the match on its own they've got They've got their chances, and Leonardo's already getting to work on Kevin Bordy's queen side. He's got a nice knight outpost here, and uh, <clears throat> yeah, looks like he's not too hasn't missed too much of a beat off of the off of the late show. <laughs> Nicely put. Any game you want to see in particular? Something from the Baden Baden against uh, yeah, Norway I just... match. I just came over to the Georg Meyer and Sebastian Mihailov game. Okay. Um, it's it's an interesting position. The exchange uh, French that people were hating on, but now it's an absolutely interesting no, position. No, it, it doesn't look like it was an exchange French from this position. Um, oh, it's, yeah. okay, it's because it's, it's the line where black took back with the queen, which is exactly. technically a little bit worse, but less equalizing. So I, I understand yeah. why black would try to do that. Georg was like, you're not going to draw me in this yeah, like exactly. normal structure. I'd rather take a worse structure that's asymmetrical and you will eventually fall. Right, but so far, so far. I like White's position better here. <laughs> so far, Mihailov hasn't fallen into anything except a bunch of sweet fifth-rank outposts. Right, right. I mean, the only downside to White's position is maybe the d4 pawn is going to end up being weak and Black has an open A file, right. but none of that is significant right now because his pieces are so active. The bishop is putting pressure on c6 if the knights ever take off. His rooks are in their dream position. Yeah. Oh man, we missed a sweet checkmate from Hammer. Oh, okay. Let's let's go. Check um, that out. I have not yet gotten to watch Hammer play much this season. So, how did he? I just want to see the well, checkmate. Well, the final at the end. position is very cute. Just want to see the checkmate at the end. So he goes to the C file, and his rook on G six is kind of like hanging. Yep. And I guess he's thinking if knight takes g6, he'll play d3 to try and back rank mate. I, that, I already saw the moves. I feel like I'm giving you a movie spoiler if I tell you what that he played. That might be foul. Oh, no, David. he doesn't even need to. He can go rook c1, c2 first, right? Yeah. yeah. Rook c1, rook c2. And if king goes back to d1, he's got rook d2 mate. And if king goes up to d3, he's got rook d2 mate. Oh. That was <sighs> beautiful. Uh, yeah that's that's more of a that's more of a game of the week for me a rook sack and then an unusual end game checkmate i kind of like that i mean it depends on you know might not might not have enough flashiness to get game of the week but that's that's my taste at least that's end game of the matchup so far yeah. sorry checkmate of the matchup all right so sorry where were we we were with georg meyer and then oh dimitri just landed a very instructional, instructive tactic here um, against Lars. So that's also going to help decide this match. After the queens are traded on e3, white concedes doubled pawns to trade queens, like clearly showing that he thinks he's worse. Knight c2 yeah, attacking he e3. Do that, but he was so afraid of the king side, so I guess I can't judge him too hard. Knight takes a3. And if pawn takes rook c3, that's a very typical tactic. But after king d3, he still needs to extricate that knight, huh? Like, what's my escape plan? What's my well, escape plan? I, I'm also interested in what he could have done better after the queens traded off. Did he have to lose that pawn? It doesn't seem like he sh he had to. Well, I don't know. I don't know if he lost the pawn. This may be the second tactical blunder in the game by Dimitri. 
Oh, right, because he like where does the knight go? Where does the knight go? Sorry, you're you're right. Right, you're right. and if he plays b4, now his knight has an escape route to b5, but that would lose the rook on c4, right? So the yeah. white knight moves here, and now it's not that his knight is trapped, but it's that the knight is the only piece defending the rook. It's like a remove the defender tactic now. Exactly. Um, oh my gosh. Right? Didn't the he like self-remove yeah. the defender himself? Self-trap followed by self-remove. It's all self-tactics. Right. I mean, it looked really tempting at first. You're like, oh, it looks like I'm winning a pawn. But then, you know, 20 seconds looking at the, the game, you realize the knight can't go anywhere. Man, Dimitri does not have his stuff together today. Yeah. You better sort that out, Dimitri. Or the gnomes are going to take you guys. Oh, this, this is just lost, right? Yes. This I is mean, lost. If white it plays, was better. It was, oh, man. If white plays knight c3 here, it threatens king c4 trapping another piece. There'd be no way out. So on knight c3, you have to play rook c5, allowing rook takes a3. And then... And then pfft. that is the saddest ending to this game that I could have imagined, even in this position where he's already up a piece. Yeah. How is oh, no man. chump, man? You can only blunder against him so many times before this guy's going to beat you. I mean, you may be like 100 points higher rated, but I don't think yeah. 100 points equals two tactical blunders. Yeah. All right. Well. Let's, can we look away from this game? It makes me feel sad. It makes for, you feel sad. Oh my god, he left the rook trapped. He left the rook trapped. I mean, at this point, it's like... All right, it's like hope know, that white didn't play knight c3 to trap your rook. Why else did white no, retreat? No, but it's when your house is already burning down and like, yeah. oh my god, garage is on fire now too. It's like, does it really matter? It's like, whatever, no. let me throw my last can of oil at my own house and then walk that's, away. That's what I'm trying to say here. <laughs> You're going to have to rebuild it anyway. You're going to have to rebuild. So. <laughs> okay. So, um, um, he resigns. Let's see how Georg okay. Meyer is doing with his, like, refusal to play the normal exchange French. Still struggling against me. High love as well. I really hope that he pulls this off because then it's going to give me that inspiration I need as a French player to... to just Give grab your queen. People a very nasty treatment if they try to exchange me. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> this is fine, Joe Bruin. Exactly. <laughs> um, it's the the meme with the dog where his house is burning down and he's pretending everything is fine. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, so far I'm seeing like hubris from the bottom, bottom top boards, right? I mean, they're playing yeah. like, hey, I'm higher rated than this gnome, so I can just do whatever the heck. No, I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I was trying. Okay, I was trying to make a pun. It didn't work. It didn't work. Um, but I'm actually starting to like Jorg's position here. <laughs> Obviously, he has all his pieces pointing towards that d4 pawn. Remember when we said the only possible weaknesses in White's position are that d4 pawn or the open a file? Yeah, you said that. So it seems like that's happening. Oh, okay. Did he just win this this pawn? <laughs> just like you said he could. Yes, yes, it did happen. Um, I, I don't know if it's gonna hold. <laughs> I don't know. French players think alike, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, the knight is supported now. I guess there's some pressure on c6, but he did, he did get the pawn. Um, well. I guess everybody in the chat understood your pun, so I'm, I'm happy so that it was a some good people one. heard it. It was a good one. <laughs> Next time you make a joke and I don't get it, you shouldn't think it's it's a it's a problem with your joke. It's not a you problem. I know, but that happens more often than I'd like, and with other people, so I mm -hmm. tend to assume it's a me. That problem. just means you're on this high level. You need like a thousand people watching so that like ten of them will catch it. Exactly, exactly. I'll I'll take that. I like the way you think about it. Um, I feel like you'd be a good dad, instilling confidence into your children to be themselves. Yeah. I think that's uh, one of my strong points is uh, just always having something nice to say about everybody. That, that's something that everybody appreciates. Um, so, Georg is still up a pawn here, but yep. it's not super easy because he's tied to the a6 pawn, right? 
Yeah, it's not super easy. There's a good long range piece. He's tied to the a6 pawn and the c6 pawn, but it seems like it seems like he's sort of getting his his pieces together here. He's got the pawn blockaded. He's got the king coming in to help defend the c pawn. And White, mm -hmm. meanwhile, played like king g1 to h1 at some point recently, right? So it's like right. if White tries to get counterplayed by attacking Georg, then White's fighting with less pieces, right? He's fighting with two rooks against two rooks, a king and a knight. Yeah. That's a good point, just the amount of pieces that are active in this endgame right now. Um, but how does, so how does Black want to make progress here is the next question. Um, I guess he's going to have to reposition a little bit. and At some point, he needs to get one of those pawns pushed, right? Yeah, I mean, the options are encircle and win the A pawn or push the C pawn. Right. Um, it's hard to do both because when you push the C pawn, this light squared bishop is going to be in touch with B7 and A8, and you're going to struggle to to deal with the A pawn, right? So then you'll basically be all in on queening your C pawn. I think Georg's going to try to win the A pawn. He's going to try and do something like, you know, double rooks, play king C7 or king C5 at some point, and disrupt the white pieces. Um, and, white... and it seems like he's taking the circling approach. Oh, and we should have pointed out to the fact that they're both very low on the clock right now, 30 seconds and less. Yeah. I would have thought White's hope was to play bishop f1, but instead White's going for rook f7 as counterplay. And I think it'll lose. I think um, I think Georg can win with his c pawn while White's attacking g7. Right. Um, or even with an attack on, on White's, White's king, maybe in some cases, like rook a2 and stuff. Simple knight e6, got everything under control. Simple blunder, bishop yeah, e4. Yeah, he's just up two pawns now. Perfect, I... perfect, yeah. Georg, wow. Very nice, very Making nice. Making the French commentators proud. I'm, I can't disagree with that statement. C'était bien fait, Georg, bien fait. All right, so that gets bottom and bottom their first win of the match. They're still trailing the gnomes after one round. Ooh, pretty bad. Yeah. Um, just looking at the results for the Biden Biden snowball snowballs, but yeah, it's not a good I thought start. This would be, it's probably it's getting closer though. So mm, one and yeah. a half, two and a half, not the worst start. Let's see. Ricketts, Maxime Lagarde won for the Con Blitz stream to kick off the second round. That's probably the 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 match that's kind Whoa, of. Whoa! In... I think we could quickly look at Tokras and David Stevenick because. Okay. Uh, Tokras, sorry, David Stevenick is almost lost on time and on the board, but it's a fun position to look at for everybody. All right, so we got two games in that rush. match with players really low on time. So let's see, Stefanik's king is not looking healthy. Honestly, there's kind of nothing healthy about Black's position here, is there? Nope. I, I guess the question just is, how does White finish him off here i mean if white didn't have a rook he could play b2 or b takes a2 with some counterplay because he could like queen a pawn while nobody was home but other than right. that it's just done i think uh cornet Maybe probably wants to play knight takes g6 here. yep there's no way to defend now that I can g6 go rookie pawn. seven when the king moves off of the g file then it's more desirable to take on g6 with the knight instead of the rook what he didn't even find, find rookie seven i guess he doesn't care He's, he's just winning in so many ways here. Right. All right, I guess we could go somewhere else. I mean, you saw how brutal Rookie 7 was, right? Like... Yeah, I did. That looked terrifying. Um, Take everything. Nice. But I can't say that I wouldn't be terrified as Black in this position, so I, yeah. I'm i not too picky. A win is a win. No, a win is a win. I agree. It's one of those situations where like you just know everything's winning. Oh, the, uh, the Turtles got a point over here, though, in the other game. Um, oh, Borisek. is that Paul Belton on your on your team? Yeah, yeah, my team is <laughs> taking <laughs> a the worse. It's the commentator's curse. It's the commentator's curse. My team is taking a worse beating than any other team out there today. Um, so Velton was the other game that was he was super low on time, right? With like eight or nine minutes for Yuri Borisek, and he had like twenty seconds. And it's this opposite colored bishop ending, but you know three connected pass pawns. Borisek just sacks the exchange, and then there's no blockades. So, simple enough. Let's track down Leonardo and Blitzstream, see what they're up to. All right. There's some kind of tactic in the center right now. Ooh, they're loading up on tactics in the center. Yep, and... 
black the defending side here has less than a minute mm -hmm. um so i feel like that amplifies the threat at least 2x yeah. um i guess he didn't go for taking on d5 because there was something with knight b2 maybe so instead he goes rook c1 tying mm -hmm. up more pieces still planning to take on d5 next move how to defend rook c to d8 and then Mm -hmm. hmm. I think f4 will deal with this queen move. Yeah. I mean, it, it does weaken the king a little bit, but there's no big issue with light with weak light squares in this position because black can't take advantage of it. Yeah. Um, and now we... he finally moves his rook out of the way, so he's attacking the rook on e5 now, but rook takes d5, that just yeah. wins a pawn. Yeah, I think so. Um... Yeah, I guess there could be some tricks trying to convert this heavy endgame with the white king being a bit open, but rook d5 takes a second pawn, and white's in very healthy shape there. Another turtle made it to the water. Very yeah. cute, Zolarian. I liked that too. Yeah. I mean, who doesn't like images yeah. of baby turtles in their head? I know, crawling along. Yeah, exactly. I think this one's going to make it too. They're all going to make it together. Team Yuri. Um, okay, so let's see. Any other? So the turtles are catching up a little bit. Mm -hmm. I guess they're, you know, fighting for their team spirit, even if they're not doing so hot this season. Yeah. We've got a top matchup between Maxime and Carles Diaz Camayonga in the next match of the Tide, Migraines, and Raptors. Um, Kamayonga down upon here. He's the guy we saw take out their board two last round. Mm -hmm. So if he can beat Maxime, then he could get then he could uh he could go for four out of four from board three. Right. But but he's not gonna win this end game. Gonna... <laughs> <laughs> if yeah, fantasy. We're observing the last seconds of that four out of four being a possibility. Right, right. Um I okay, so does but, black yeah. have any way to try to save this? So his king is close to the the H and G pawn, which is good since mm -hmm. that's white's extra pawn, his pass pawn. Um, I think black has a nice structure. So basically, he wants to hold tight, and then yeah. like if white pushes the H pawn before all his pieces are in position to support it, try and encircle and win it, and otherwise, you know, wait and counter whatever plan white comes up with, which is probably going to be something like bishop e three f4 and g5 right again not trapping the bishop on h6 but i think well at least the obvious plan for white is to try and get that g pawn up to help with the h pawn okay, so he's making space for his pawns with bishop e3 blitzstream has four seconds and he's going for a perpetual with h4 so we're gonna we're gonna check out kevin for a second yeah, let's see if this perpetual actually works. Let's see how many people on my fantasy team can go 0-2. Come on, okay. Kevin. I don't see. Let's do something here. <laughs> He's down three pawns now. So this is like, it's like, you know, you hit or you or you miss. Yeah, it's over. Yeah, the perpetual is here or you go home and you try it. Your best. Um, so, Okay. Okay, lures the king out to go rook h5. Rook takes g Oh, he's going to win the rook if he took. Yep, cannot yeah, take that. Very nice tactic there. And then what? He just plays like rook h6 to stop rook h5? Is that good enough? That seems solid. I guess rook, rook h5, king g4 doesn't even hurt that much anymore now that black's king side structure got, yeah, got broken. Yeah, all he has so. to do is just stop the check and then, and obviously get out of the. Rook threat. g5, rook g5, another easy move. Yeah, this is not going to work out for us. And White's yeah. even like thinking instead of like playing at Kevin's pace. If you guys are ever in this situation where you've got three minutes and some poor fellow has two or three seconds and you're in a good position, don't play as fast as that guy. Use your time. Yeah. Take, take a note from your here. Yeah, you got four He's extra winning. pawns. You He's don't winning, need the guy to flag. And that's the clean way to do it. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so 
we can yeah. we can wait and see the beautiful checkmate that I'm sure is incoming here. Yep. Yeah. King d6, and then we're going to see a nice mate. Getting close. Queen e5, rook e7, queen c7. Danya would pre-move it all. That's how he plays. I saw it. even in the PCL, he like he'll pre-move like three or four moves once he like once he sees their force, sees just the to flex a little bit, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so good result for the turtles. It's gonna be three five. Three five, not game. bad. They stabilized the first round. They lost three one, so now they went two two, and that's yeah, that's pretty good. Um, Maxime has successfully played G five. Um, successfully because Kamayonga tried to do something with f5, which is not exactly what I recommend for black. Unless f5 like wins white's h pawn, you don't want to you don't want to put those two pawns together for the opponent. Yeah. Um and that knight on e7 is not looking great. Mm. Because the king won't be able to move back onto the eighth row because eighth rank because rook takes uh. b8. Right. So maybe there's a way so to... So this bishop's kind of trapped on b8, and then the knight on e7 can't move, and the king can't move because it would disrupt the 8th rank. Yep. So, so black's getting kind of bottled up. Yeah, MVL is like one of those bugs that when it stings you, you start getting a slow paralysis, and I you see. don't notice it happening right away. But right. then it's happened, you can't move anything, and then you get eaten by the bug. Nice. Is that a yeah. real bug or something from I've been anime? watching too many YouTube videos with this guy who tested all of the insect, insect stings on himself to see which ones were the more most painful. Very addicting, but now those those metaphors are always in my head. So now you know so much about insect stings. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, you can like see a move and you're like, ah, this move reminds me of the Insectius Berexius. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Oh, the tarantula hawk, Joe Bruin. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, those are really terrifying. I've never seen something take down a tarantula like that. But I'm I'm done. No more bugs. Um, All right. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay with <laughs> me. Know. Doesn't gross me out. So what's gonna come now? Can he play H seven? I imagine that he can play H seven by now, and he does. Yeah. I looked away from bugs and like calculated that H7 wins in like two seconds, so it's, it's probably not too complicated. MVL is a bug, guy in the box. Good, good clip. <laughs> I don't know how he he feel, but I, I think it's a pretty good, good one. Well, if they tweet um, oh, it and he sees it, then you have to be ready to answer for it. I, I will. I'm gonna tell him it's a compliment. Yeah. I'm like glad some, some chat people have seen those videos and they're also addicted. They're very fascinating. So basically the threat here from white is to play knight g6 for anybody who's wondering about the position. is to play knight g6. The knight can't take because it's pinned, so the king takes. And then you play rook takes e7. And we're basically h7 is about overworking this rook. This is yep. the rook that was stopping the h-pawn. Black was hoping to win the h-pawn from, from us. But now that rook is busy defending a bishop on b8, a knight on e7. It's just too much. So... Um, yeah. If black takes on h4, king h4, and then plays rook h8 to try and collect that pawn, um, you play g6 check. And then, you know, king takes g6, for example, rook takes e7, and white's right. winning. Yeah, and Sam is also saying knight takes g6 is a winning threat, right? Yeah, if it was white's turn to move and he could take on g6, um, black can't take back with his knight, has to take back with his king. And then the rook can take the knight and promote. It's just it, it's collapsing here. Yep. So that should be the end after h7. I mean, black's pieces can't really move, so it's not like he's gonna have right. some surprise way of getting out, right? If he's been paralyzed by a bug, and then exactly. and then someone comes to eat him, all he can do is watch himself get eaten. Yeah. Pretty sad way to die. Um, do you want to see another crushing attack yeah. or a more equal position? Okay, Always. let's go between Just Mig and Healy's O. Just Mig. Yeah. Miguel so, Admiral, another 2490 yes. mosquito. Exactly. They're loaded up um, on these guys. Ooh, he's got a pawn wedged into F7. That can make it very easy to checkmate. <laughs> right. Um, I don't see the right technique yet i mean e6 looks e6. like the natural move first yeah. to protect the pawn mm -hmm. um and then after e6 if it was white's turn to move what what are the threats he might have here i think that's knight always 
a way you can think about an attack. Try to figure out if it was your move, what's your scariest threat. Yeah, I guess knight f5 and knight h5, the moves that would right. checkmate on g7 would be next. Yeah, um, knight, oh right, because knight h5 is stopping f6 as well. So after knight h6, you just have to sack a piece to defend g7, right? Yeah. So here he's playing h4, which is, I guess, a classy move from Miguel. I think he's thinking that after knight f7, he can play knight f5. And in the position before h4, um, if white had played knight f5, black would play queen f7, defending g7. So that's the meaning behind h4. If the knight takes on f7, then knight f5. And it's just done, done, done. Um, so h4... Feliz recognizes the danger, tries to come up with something funky with queen e6. I don't think anything's going to work when you're this lost, but let's have a look. White's going to play what? Rook f6? Yeah, maybe so rook I'm, f6. So white so. doesn't want to trade queens here. That's the attack. Um, I think not. I mean, it's not like he's not winning an endgame with two pass pawns, but... Yeah. Queen I do six, like rook f six a lot. Knight e six, and I'm blockaded for a second, and it's like that's annoying. I've got things to do. I want this to be over with. So right. So I don't know. I um, man, he's got eleven minutes to sit here and enjoy this position. Or yeah, if he's and, got and things to do, he could he could have right, a ten right. minute break before the next game. <laughs> so. That's that's actually pretty important if you can recover after quite a few games so that you could be more fresh. So let's see the a problem, rapid checkmate. So we the can problem with it. rook f6 is I undermine my own f7 pawn. So now, like, whatever I do, like, I take the knight, black plays queen f7, and they just cover their king with the queen. So rook f6 is a bad idea. Yeah. And if I retreat the queen obstinately, for example, to h5, do I now allow black to take on f7 without the knight f5 win? A classic thing in this kind of position is like, as white, you're like, ah, oh, I want that 10 minute break, or I want to go eat a cookie, or I want to go, I you know, talk to my friend about how great my game was and how brilliant it was. Then you play like h4 too fast. They play queen e6 and you realize you still have work to do and it ends yep. up taking longer. He still has work to do, but I mean, his position is, is still great here. Yeah. He's not going to get that break, but he's going to get that win. And that's what matters. Yeah. So maybe the easiest at this point is queen f5. I mean, this sacks the f7 pawn, so maybe my definition of easy is, is totally wrong. But we go queen f5, trade queens on f5 so that the knight can move. Mm -hmm. Knight takes on f7, play e6 with the e pawn. Okay. Knight to d6 or d8, or can't go to d8 and allow rook f8, so knight to d6, and then rook takes d5, and then pff, knight to, I don't know, right? We're just, uh, you, you're just like converting to the winning endgame here. Well, we're just beating the tar out of this poor knight is basically the point, right? Like, it's just, it's got nowhere to go. If rook d8, e7, if knight e8, e7, and rook to d8, I think... Yeah, I think we found a way for him to win, and he just found it too. He just played queen f5. Yep. Not to mention that his opponent has three minutes, so there's going to be more blunders later on. He didn't take her out with blow here, but he'll do it the nice, clean way. Um, yeah. Well, this will be pretty sweet. I think kicking a knight around like that has its own joy. Like, you can think of all the times that a knight made a bunch of hops you didn't predict. Yeah. and like beat you and then you're like ha hop now knight <laughs> you got nowhere to go exactly you're finally getting back revenge for all of that yeah so okay all right well, so that one's going the mosquitoes way yep let's see who else is still let's here see. the migraines have just taken a small lead four and a half three and a half on the raptors Sad Knight was sent to the glue factory. That's too far, Brad Pitt. Oof. When I found that horses were my favorite animal as a kid, when I found that out, let me tell you, <laughs> tears were real. Yeah. <laughs> Don't want to think about that glue factory. Nope. Unless um, it's the horses revolting and throwing the people into the machinery. 
oh my gosh, that might also be gruesome. But you mentioned that you haven't seen a lot of Hammer's games, so maybe we could look a little bit. Yeah, I thought of that when his game popped up, and then it was like, you know, move three, and I was like, well, maybe we'll wait. But yeah, let's see. Let's see what it's looking like. Uh, it looks like he got some kind of a Maroxy bind and traded a piece on D5, right? Let's check. Yep. Traded hey, a piece on back. D5. <laughs> Took that bishop pair. Didn't want to trade queens. Nope. Um, okay, so he has more space. He's got mm -hmm. the bishop pair. Yep. His king isn't... His king is safe, even if black is starting to push pawns on the side. Um, that e7 pawn looks like it might be a weakness for black, so if he had to come up with an idea at like 4 e one here. Also because you can't really push any other pawns. Okay, so he played rook e1. Yep. Should he be worried about h4? Do you think black has anything to back up his h push in this position? I think that the h push is perhaps slightly useful like it could go to h4 at some point or it could support the move knight g4 at some point mm -hmm. um or if the knight has to move somewhere it'll avoid like bishop g4 winning a rook on c8 so maybe he was watching dimitri's dimitri kolar's game in the previous round right because knight d7 inspiration here knight d7 is also a maneuver in these positions right you trade bishops and then put the knight on e5 or something I mean, yeah, not when we hang rook takes e7, here. but, but uh, yeah, you want to avoid bishop g4. So h5 might just be to control the g4 square. I don't feel like h4 is, like, super powerful yet, though it could come up, you know, as they transition mm -hmm. to an end game. A move like h4 can be annoying, threatening h3. So maybe in that case, it's nice to have the pawn there since black is kind of grasping for moves here, just in case that it becomes... Yeah threat later on in the game yeah i mean black's got less space like you said from the beginning so it's like yeah. they need to find something and exactly and yeah. also joe is saying hammer respecting his bishops hammer would whenever he'd watch my stream that would be the advice he'd tell me you need to respect your bishops and I see. whenever i look at hammer's games that is a recurring theme he's always got the bishops yes well he must be um unreasonably optimistic then to use an economic term <laughs> <laughs> oh okay um sorry i just wanted to make sure that we weren't missing any games that were low on time pressure right now and ending soon right maybe the game between uh, if it Nicholas, were it would be what quinton 94 quinton. and gm Hosenbeth. yeah it would definitely Hos be Chenbeth. the mosquitoes match yeah Hushenbeth. since they're so yeah. close two two so let's see. White's got a rook against a bishop pair, and the bishop pair has trapped one of the rooks. So um, is this a huge upset happening here? Did did Grandmaster Hushenbeth not respect the bishops? Let's let's look here. Okay. Maybe um, rookie two. Maybe rookie two is still complicated. Sort of saying, right. like, so, trying I mean, to get revenge on the two? bishops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I see what you're trying to say there, at least. But that doesn't pin the queen after queen takes b1. Oh, the queen's defended, so white, black can just oh. play bishop c3. But speaking of pinning the queen, we want to yeah. keep our rook on b1, right? Okay, so move the queen instead of the rook. Or just take on e4 and then attack the bishop again. Ah, yes. But then black can play, like, knight c4 or knight to d3. Yeah, that's um, a good point. I wanted a second pin, so let's play queen e2 for a second so I can show my second pin. Okay. Let's After bishop takes b1, rook takes b1, black can't play knight c4 because we've got a heavy piece on the e file. That's why I wanted it that way. Let's see. Okay, I'm just catching up to the same position you have. Right, so the knight can't move here. That's, that's interesting as well. What can black do in this position to defend his bishop? Um, he can't. He can't move his rook. He loses his knight. Mm -hmm. He can't move his queen. Um, is there any way he can get a counterattack? 
maybe c5 but that looks very desperate and like it's not going to save anything c5 rook b2 would probably do it he played rook e4 though like you suggested so we will have to wait to find out the truth oh, of the queen e2 queen idea h5. okay i didn't see queen h5 queen h5 that's a fun move because his knight is so close to the king and he's attacking h6 as well maybe he has some type of attack to follow up with here yeah um black is up a solid piece but they've got two pieces kind of mutually stuck on the queen side if the queen leaves the bishop dies the bishop mm -hmm. leaves the queen dies so um, Quinton's got to cover this king somehow. I mean, I don't think he's in danger of losing because he's up a piece. So he can always just give up the piece and cover things. Right, right. But I guess uh, he's in danger of a perpetual check or something. I don't see a per I guess, yeah. I mean, if he moves his rook too far, but his rook can stay pretty close. There's Okay, there's no way to defend h6 and defend e8. Is there any other scary threats that white has here? Bringing in his knight. Knight f5 at some point. Knight f5 looks scary. Yeah. Yep. I mean, it's not necessarily like a one-move mate threat, but it's some 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 scariness. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, so candidate moves for black. Hmm, not so easy. Knight f7, maybe? Knight f7. I'm still scared about knight f5 or queen g6 in that position. Yeah, and you know what else you could be scared of? Knight f7, queen to e2. The old switcheroo. Oh, no, then there's rook b8. So that doesn't really matter. Okay, okay, so the queen has to stay on the attack. Okay. Sometimes it's nice, right? Like the knight retreats, so it can't come to c4. Then you just like switch yeah. back. You're like, I win the bishop back, and then I, I just totally keep playing. I totally understand why you, you looked at that. It does make sense. Um, so knight f7 is probably going to be more like queen g6 or knight f5, right? Yeah. So maybe not knight f7. So queen g6, king f8, knight f5, threatening mate. And... Can... Right, threatening mate. And basically winning for white. So we're watching Quinton's time tick down. Because this is not simple. And he does not go knight f7. He saves the rook who should best what keeps the this pressure one on? as game of the week if this attack works out. oh yeah quite likely quite likely i mean he's there down a go. piece it's messy it's long term he's putting the pressure on i mean he played queen h6 fast which i approve of he's just seeing like hey can i collect two or three pawns and come out ahead c5 yeah. all right i mean he can take on g5 if he wants yeah or but i think he wants 96 play 96 and go for the checkmate oh yeah. Yeah. it's it's funny because if the queen tries to protect the checkmate you could grab the bishop if the yeah and now tries... he's got queen g5 to e5 so it oh my looks gosh, like this is so beautiful he has got this one he just gets his material back yep and by now he's up like two pawns and he's still attacking the king right okay when i say get his material back he's already fine but now he's going to be up material and grabs the yeah. knight yeah, I mean, until you get the piece back, it, it makes, you know, you want. Yeah, yeah, the piece that you sacrificed. There we nice go. To get that trooper back. That's GG, my friend. There's no reason to play a position like this as black. It's just too painful. Just too painful. Knight g5 to f7. Queen here to g6 to f7. Sure, get, don't, don't ever give him your knight. Well, yeah, he just wins the rook mm -hmm. after this on top of the clinical monstrous army clinical here. there's a point for the bears they needed that the mosquitoes had pulled ahead pesky that things was so beautiful look the mosquitoes still are on their way i mean it's not like they're winning it but they still are in position to be the first team to win a match without a 2500 player in the lineup <laughs> that's fantastic i was laughing at a chat talking about hammer making a video where he says knights are better than bishops I don't know if I believe this. I don't know if I believe that he made it, but I'll take a look after. <laughs> look at um, look at Meyer's game for a second. Do you recognize the outpost squares that Black has? Hang on, catching up to his game. Yeah. Well, um, when you get here, he's playing against Lars Oscar Hauga, who was the uh, recipient of Kolars' blunders 
last round. Um, and uh, Jorg all often gets in these positions that right. look very cramped. Yeah. And then he just kind of wiggles out of there. Right. It's like he flipped the board, took white, and still let the opponent outpost at bishop five and king five, as they used to say in the old descriptive. Queen bishop yeah. five and king five. The yeah. exact same two outposts. Um, okay, so there's these two outposts, but is there some type of tactic on d5? Uh, Let's try does, it. does knight takes d5 work? Let's try it. Rook takes. Or, okay, knight takes. Rook takes. Rook, Rook takes, takes d5, maybe a simple move. Queen takes d5, queen c4. Yeah. Queen takes e4. I mean, mm. this looks like he's just up a pawn. That looks kind of basic, Alexandra. <laughs> it did look a little too basic, so I'm, I'm sure there's got to be some <laughs> complexity hidden there. Yeah, I mean, I've got no idea what it was, but oh, um, okay. so he, he did he, something else. He took on, on e4. All right. Did another basic tactic. Okay. Well, he's not going to take with the d-pawn. Maybe That's it was for sure. Maybe it was one of those situations wherever you where wherever you spit it lands on a free pawn. <laughs> yeah, that's that might be the case cuz when there's outposts like this and everything is attacked, pinned. Whoa. You can figure out more than one tactic. One of our viewers spotted this for us. Knight takes d5, knight to b2. It would have def been defended by the bishop on g7 once the c3 knight moved. Oh, okay. And then, so that's why. Then this rook on d1 is somehow trapped by the black minor pieces. That's pretty weird. Yeah. That's pretty weird. Nice find, man. Nice find. All right, so bishop e4, knight e3. That's the old take, 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 desperado kind of thing. Queen e3, d4. I mean, it looks like Georg's up a pawn no matter what, right? He just can't yeah. help himself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can't help himself he's like come to the fifth ranks so that you'll be overexposed and drop a pawn he is such a strategic player or i guess positional is the right word i'm checking back in on Understands hammer it so well because i'm pretty sure that georg's got his pawn and he's gonna work it for a bit um looking at hammer's game there's been some major changes hammer's kingside dark squares got weak um when h4 got played by diamant so he did something with the h pawn like you like you wanted him to and there we go um what hammer has done is he moved his c pawn up to c5 and c6 um breaking open a file on the queen side which he wants to sort of like rake with his bishops right well it made sense he had the space advantage there if he had to break the position anywhere see the c file made the most sense for him wow there was an evil move with queen a1 and you know I approve of evil in chess. Only, Only in chess. chess though. Only in chess. But... The idea is for black to play bishop f4 and then white to play rook to d1. That is so nasty. Checkmate your own queen rather than trading right. it with his queen. Right. Um, so he actually has to make space for his queen at some point here. Yeah, I mean, um, maybe he has to retreat the bishop back to g7 to deal with the problems on that diagonal but then what happens after bishop e3 let's put it on the board bishop e3 there's only one spot for the queen d3. so not hard to pick d3 d3 and then i guess she escapes no. to b5 and the game goes on okay yeah you can't attack the queen with the bishop on e2 because d5 hangs so just yeah. barely that queen is making just an barely. escape. Okay, so it may be time to play that bishop g7 move. I mean, otherwise, you know, at some point, Hammer's going to play something like rook e7, rook d6, or bishop f6, and something's going to go right. wrong. I mean, you can't just leave this leave this hanging forever. Yeah, but if, he, if black has to retreat here... Um, I don't know. I... I really like White's position. I'm not seeing something that's going to win material right away. Yeah, yeah. But I like White's position too. Maybe right. after Bishop G7. No, you can't play Rook E3 trying to cut off her retreat because of Knight takes G4. I don't think that. 
No, bishop g7 check. No, that could oh, that could work out. We'll see. Okay, bishop g7 was played, mm -hmm. and hammer just kicks the queen away with rook d1. No, no weird rook no d3 hesitation. move. No hesitation. No hesitation. Yeah. Go away. Leave, please. Yeah. Got him a one way ticket to retreat. The queen's yeah. gonna move back, and then hammer can continue with the rest of his idea to kind of attack on the queen side. Right. So. so yeah, I mean, he wants to continue making progress there, like you say. Maybe look for a chance to play a four b five, or look for a chance to play rook a six, and so forth. Right. Okay. Queen c three. Queen c three. That's what I expected. A creeping move. Yeah. His queen yep. just wants to, you know, have a look at the bishops and just sit there and be happy in the back rank. Yeah, and let's not forget to point out that if knight takes d5, it doesn't work because of bishop takes g7. So that pawn on d5, even though it looks very isolated and alone and scared, is actually amply protected here. Yeah. Maybe king g8 is played to try and like make that a possible threat at some point by getting out of bishop g7 check. Well, there may be rook situations. Well, does look scary now? Yeah. Although he can just retreat the king to h7 since he's not going to take, but right, he cannot. If you can trade off the rook and bring your queen onto c7. I think it's, it's a good time. Good time, trade, trade, queen c7. Get into all these things. That's that's yeah. That queen becomes a kid in a candy store there. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, nice, nice. I think um, Hammer is going to spend a little time before moving because he can't bear to mess up his beautiful position and like finish the game. He wants to just enjoy this picture a little bit longer. Right? Yeah. yeah. It's just um, too I'm going to shout out Hammer quickly in chat for those of you watching his game. If you want to go see him thinking very intensely, which is probably what's happening. Okay. There's the link. <laughs> is he is he an intense streamer? Uh, I, he's just very focused which yeah. makes sense in positions like this. Awesome. So naturally, I just subscribed to his channel, not to break off the concentration, but to see if he breaks off the concentration. <laughs> okay, never mind. Um, bad, <laughs> bad commentator. Okay. That's fine. You can send like a thousand people over there to like subscribe all at once and see if it <laughs> makes him lose the game. That would be really evil. I wonder, he probably turns off noise notifications, right? So there's no maybe loud alert when somebody subscribes. Otherwise, if yeah. you're in a tense position, that's really frustrating, huh? Mm. And now he did not play queen c7. Instead, he played bishop e3. So he's saying that black's going to have to play queen e5. He's going to trade the queens to have zero risk and then go take on a7 with like his bishop or something. Right very clean um yeah the queen doesn't have anywhere else to go so she has to go to e5 and with those two pass pawns i think it's something that he could win even with a hundred sub notifications going on really loudly okay <laughs> no, not that i'm not so it's gonna to take try. a thousand folks <laughs> yeah he, he, he's ignoring the subscription yeah dr matt is saying that that I may have been right that bishop g7 rook e3 would have kept the queen trapped instead of rook d1. Interesting. So that could have that could have been another option for hammer, but I think he was really focused on easy wins, huh? He wanted to just like let the bishops yeah reign until the opponent just resigns. Um, and and Georg Meyer's game is also getting towards the end. He has two minutes on the clock. Um, he's up a pawn okay. in a rook queen bishop end game two so minutes tells me he doesn't think it's that easy to win yeah exactly so he's definitely better but it's not one of those things that is totally obvious so yeah. oh someone called you a young q grant i think is, that's an actor is Hugh grant old uh, I think he's not alive anymore. Not alive? Okay, I'd better be younger than that. <laughs> so, I, I hope so. <laughs> Let's just check in. Greg says it looks super easy for Georg. So then what's the hesitation Oh, no, I'm sorry. Georg? He's alive. He's 58 years old. Oh, 
Okay, sorry, they're back to the game. Um. Ooh, they said that we're the first Americans to pronounce Georg's name correctly. There we go. All okay, right. I know, I know. My, my dad would get upset because Romanians are superstitious and they say if you ever thought someone was dead and they aren't, then I'm not going to finish that sentence, but I'm a little uncomfortable. You can't even, you can't even tell me what the end of that sentence is? No, but I don't believe these Romanian superstitions. So Then why fine. aren't you telling me the end of your sentence? <laughs> well, what you thought comes true if it wasn't. Okay. So if I thought he was dead and he isn't, then... Yeah. Then he could? So yeah. So can you just finish off all your enemies that way? Like if you're like if the Romanians were ever in a war, would they just be like, I think that those soldiers over there shooting at me, I think they're well, dead. You to, but you you have to actually believe it. It can't be false. Ah, uh, okay. For it to work. They're saying that while we were learning about Romania, Georg missed the chance to play rook takes b6 here, presumably here. Ah, uh, okay. Because um, if queen takes. Queen takes queen e8, only yeah. legal move. Oh, no more legal moves. Yeah. That looks pretty darn convincing. So maybe Greg was right that this position wasn't that hard to win with Rook B6. But I was right. also right that Georg didn't think it was easy to win. That's why he was sitting here thinking, because he obviously didn't see that one. <sighs> okay. Um, but here, I, again... He's getting to one minute on the clock, so maybe he's a little bit nervous in time pressure. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Think that's, that's fair to assume. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking like somebody who's up a pawn doesn't end up like so low on time unless they're thinking that it's tricky. And yes, Sam Copeland, you're correct. I was confusing him with Cary Grant. Thank you. All okay. right. You're confusing me with names of people I don't know about. <laughs> but they're all cool actors. Oh, okay. So you, you should just feel good about that. Just feel good about that. Can he just take on G7 and play bishop C3 and get this over with? No? Guess he, not. Jorg only wins slowly. You're not going to see fireworks here. Um, <laughs> then he's why am I here? His eight pawn. He's going to defend his eight pawn. Defend the eight pawn. Um, then he's going to think about whether he should sacrifice. You know, he, he plays a very very methodically he's not threatening queen e7 people because of rook f2 followed by checkmate on the other square right um blitzstream just won a game my fantasy player finally won a game he's on the board my team is on the board oh and the king that's blitzstream. probably enough to pass that's probably enough to pass anna rudolph right if one of my players won one game Hey, <laughs> Being, play nice. Um, so the Canes blisters are now going to be at seven points. So they just I'm just making the just making the same joke she makes. You know. It's, I know. I know. If it's I say bad things about myself, then you can repeat them too. Yeah, that, that's fair. Okay, Khan's blitzstream starting to take out the turtles, huh? Seven three. It's in danger of getting out of hand. Thanks to my man blitzstream, I knew he was going to score at least one point today. <laughs> Hey, you wouldn't put him on your fantasy team if you didn't think that was the case. <laughs> That's right. Um, Hammer, okay, so Hammer won his game. That makes sense. He was totally crushing there. Yeah. A weird drawn position between Cornet and Borisek? Yeah, I just came, what is going on? Yeah, I mean, they just agreed a draw after E6 was played. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I mean, I have no idea. Why What's would going e6 for what? Play? I guess the thought is if black plays bishop e6, then he plays queen c6, and black doesn't have a pass pawn to try and win with on the queen side. If black right. takes with the f pawn, then like the king just doesn't have shelter on the second rank, and maybe even the white king goes towards f6. And right, so king e5, and the black here. king becomes exposed. So maybe they were both afraid here. <laughs> right, just an odd position, right? <laughs> Equally fearful, exactly. But I think if I was Yura, I wouldn't take this draw because my team is down so much. Your team is Maybe, down enough. Yeah, three and a half to seven and a half. Maybe so he thought, oh, we're down so much, it doesn't even matter, which would right. be a depressing way to think. So I hope that's not the case. Right. I mean, it is true that a position like bishop e6, queen c6, rook a2, if we keep our f7 pawn, there's zero ways to lose for black. Um, so you could you could keep playing this and hope to do something weird. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, yeah. do you think it's at least worth trying if you're trying to get that extra point? Because then it would have been four seven, still still pretty far, but at least they have better chances to maybe even equalize. Sorry, Rook takes G seven played finally. Sorry oh, okay. for the interruption, but let's go back there. Rook takes G seven. It finally hit. It he hit. just wanted to build up the anticipation. It hit with the fury of rook takes g7. He was like, first I'm going to win the b pawn, so they'll say I could have won with my a pawn, and then I'll win with rook g7, so they'll say I could have calculated the fireworks. I, I know a lot of people give Jorg, you know, stuff for, stuff for, mm -hmm. for being this type of player, but I really appreciate it. He also plays the French. I like those slow wins where... You You're are taking your time. so loyal. You are so loyal. I, I appreciate it. I appreciate yeah. his play. It's good. If I ever meet him meet him in person, I'm going to let him know that. Let him know that. All right. That I'm a That big you fan. appreciate it. Yeah, it's exactly. Good. You okay. are appreciated. You All are right. appreciated. I'm clicking to the Snowball's other game here. Dimitri Kolar's against Mihailov. And... Did this tactic work for Kolar's this time? Has he turned it around? The yeah, he can't slick, blunder all the time. The slick check in order to take the bishop on b5, that's going to decide the game. Oh, Beautiful. beautifully done. Okay. Nice. Dimitri. So he you starts are... off with this, knight, knight, this nice knight d4 hitting the two pieces. He's sort of like slow rolled them or set them up or hustled them or whatever with the blunders in the first round. They're like, he blundered rook d2 and he's all pinned up. And then boom, check. Setting up knight b5. Resigns. And uh, yeah, he's up a knight, or if black trades everything off on d6, then king f4, g5, and he wins easily. Yep. And his opponent from last round says, so lucky. <laughs> Those knights, man. So lucky. Wow. So first, so first the guy benefits from like a couple blunders from him, and then, is this the same guy? Oh man, I just put that, I put his comments in chat so chat could see as well. Oh man. So like first you like, the guy blunders against you twice and you, some could argue you get a lucky win against him when he's like not yet awake in the first round. And then he beats your teammate and you're like so lucky. Oh, dude, did you see the quote that he has on his profile? Oh my gosh. You find me offensive. I find you offensive for finding me offensive. It's an Eminem line. Oh, he's an Eminem fan. Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm, I'm following him on chess.com. Yeah, no, Sorry. Dad, I said no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, I guess Dimitri shouldn't talk back to him, or he'll break out a freestyle. Okay, I'm done um, stalking the the players, but he has yeah. kind of a popping YouTube channel where he does a lot of Papa Sucharia videos. Some of them have almost 300,000 views. What's what Sorry, first you got to tell me what Papa Sucharia is. I think it's this game where it's some random game. Papa Bakeria. A game where you bake fake cakes that you can't eat? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I'd be like, okay. where's my food, man? Oh, man. This is really cool. Okay, so I'm so sorry. I'm gonna go back. I subscribe. That's all right. Back to the games. He gained. He gained a subscriber. Oh, he did. He gained a fan. And he I'm got gonna, to throw I'm some. Root for him he got for to now throw on. some random shade at Dimitri, which <laughs> is always good when your team loses a game, I guess. Yeah. Get something out of it. But uh, the snowballs are now one point behind the gnomes, so it looks like we're gonna have three close matches today. What do you say? Three close That's ones. Awesome. One perhaps. Easier one for the Blitzstream. Oh, I feel a bit bad for the Ljubljana Turtles since it's so far. It would have been nice to have, see them get a little bit of a comeback, but I am happy about the close matches. Yeah. Um, I found an interesting opening position between Quinton Ducarman and Feliz Osmanoja. I'm um, here as well. White has gained a pawn in one of these... And one of these uh, double king pawns, but I don't know if I like it. I don't know if I like this pawn. Usually, right. at least in rapid chess, I give these kind of pawns with no stuffs given. You know, just 
Yeah. Just give it, bring out your pieces, and assume that your opponent's going to blunder a tactic. Yeah, you just get active much faster. You open up the B file, which is amazing for your rook. Um, but at the same time, if Black doesn't play it properly, she is going to have two isolated pawns and a pawn down. So there's a, another side to consider there as well. But rookie eight is coming so quickly after the bishop moves mm -hmm. that maybe white is just too stuck here. There's also possibly a bishop a6 issue. Like if you kept your bishop on the long diagonal which and cover knight g4 and your king and stuff, which might make sense, then black can play bishop a6 and you're reduced to playing c4. And, you know, black could trade on d2 to win the pawn on c4. Um, so, I mean, maybe that's the best you can do is give that. Yeah. I, I'm looking at the position that you have on the board. Mm -hmm. um, it's not, I, I don't like it. <laughs> Wait. Yeah. <sighs> okay, so, so we're back at the initial one they're saying frolic is doing well i've wanted to see more of his games because i've sort of seen pieces of frolic games over the course mm -hmm. of the season and i was like wow this guy seems to be good yeah um, so let's go to his game he frolic actually was... won the decisive game the last game to finish in the battle royale um oh no he drew the last game and he was like losing this end game and drew it to give them a half point win in the whole battle royale so he's been pretty clutch for them and here he's got an end game against a GM 100 points higher rated than him, but it looks very good, just like uh, just like Chess Guy was saying. And I am now starting to become a Mosquito fan. Okay. Just because I always like the teams who didn't have the easiest start and they're coming back. And this is also just a difficult matchup for them where the Berlin Bears have a slightly stronger lineup and i guess you also just like get like to get back to classic sometimes i mean you learned about all the funky insects but it's a good old yeah. classic so mosquito yeah i don't like the mosquitoes because they don't cause pain but they do cause death okay. I, yeah so it's, it's better if it's painful but you're not gonna die so they're I not see. my favorite bug they're not, not the best one bug. all yeah. right if I could eradicate any type of species, it would be mosquitoes. Oh, wow. No, so they're at they, the they, bottom of your list. Yeah, no, they just carry so much disease. Actually, the world, I do, I don't know what, a lot of bugs, spiders, they eat flies, they do something, right? But mosquitoes, yeah. useless, terrible bugs. Not to, to say stuff about their names. I like the team, just not. Just not clearly the not their mascot. Yeah, exactly. All right. Um, well, mosquitoes, you heard it. You've. <laughs> And I'm not talking to the team now. I'm talking to the bugs. Alexandra's yeah. called you out. If she had a switch, she would speciesize yeah. you. Yes, I would. I would. Um, and it seems like hopefully chat agrees. But I got a little bit too angry about mosquitoes there. Mm -hmm. I didn't expect it. So <laughs> It brought up some issues. It, yeah. looks, it looks like Frolic's going to get the C7 pawn too, isn't it? Isn't yeah. he just going to collect everything here? Yeah, he's definitely going to grab the c7 pawn. Um, the only thing black can try to do, I guess, is counterplay with rook a2. I thought but I thought it might be like knight e4, but rook a2, I mean, he takes he on can c7. Take c7 and attack the knight after Knight's that. dangling, knight comes to e4 maybe. Yeah. All right. Okay, chat has now gotten into a mosquito discussion. Some people are saying they're the deadliest creatures, tiny vampires. Other people are saying you can't wipe mosquitoes because there are going to be consequences. Nature knows while science does not. <laughs> I have not seen this in a chess stream before. It's true. We never know the consequences of what we do. Even in a chess game, you're like, should I take this pawn? There may be consequences. Okay, I'm going to research mosquitoes after the stream. Um... <laughs> All I'm, right, so I'm, I'm going back and zoning in on the games. So it's not obvious to me how actually we would deal with ninety four. It looks a little bit annoying, but okay. ninety four, right? Yeah, so we have to protect f two here, um, but there's actually no good way to protect f two because neither of the rooks can go back onto exactly. the second. Exactly. 
Right. Isn't that annoying? That's actually very annoying. Um, now, I could play f3 here. That's ugly as can be. Yeah. But if I kill that knight, it'll be worth it. So if I go f3, mm -hmm. what's black going to do? My idea is to play rook c7, and then the knight can't go to c4, e4, f5, or b5. So I want that knight on e8. Okay. So is rook a1 check a good follow-up after f3? Oh, you're looking a little bit earlier. Sorry. Yeah, I'm not even this. taking on C7. You're not taking. I'm you're trying just... to keep that knight yeah. out of the game. before. Because once a knight gets into the game, I'm really bad at controlling it. I can't I can't stop it once it gets going. Right. Well, what about instead of F3, Rook D4? Because it serves a the similar purpose. The same purpose, purpose and doesn't shred and my And it doesn't position. make my pawns ugly. Okay, but. Right. Oh, he, oh, he just, just played a move. C7. He took okay. on C7. So okay. he's going to fight that knight. I don't know how, but he's going to fight it. Interesting. So what is he going to do here? <laughs> um, no, I'm just I... laughing as you turn the entire chat into like a bug <laughs> chat instead of a chess chat today. We're like the number one bug stream right yeah, now. Yeah, change the category to insect talks. Um, <laughs> oh man all right well i'm glad you guys are talking it's nice to see that chat is actively involved here yeah so rook's oh. double rook's double is his answer i mean he's just given f2 he's just given f2 so i guess if knight f2 maybe he wants to play rook d2 and fourth a knight trade if rook f2 he might just want to play like rookie five and try and kill the knight. Okay. That seems Can I pretty take logical. Two? Yeah, I like rook d2 there. Frolic's um, got a lot of time on the clock to right. be this deep into the end game. I guess he's. I mean, it'd be great. It would be great to be there in person to watch him beat a GM. That would be pretty exciting to me. For sure. And it looks like most of the lines we're looking at here, if white's able to trade off, then he'll just be up a pawn in the end game, right. which is not an automatic win. He's still going to yeah. have to push it out, but yeah, it's not an automatic win, but I guess like, I guess like with two on one far away on the queen side in a night end game with the white pieces that remain active, it would be pretty close to a win. So he's maybe confident that he could turn it into a win. Yeah. So, so Mons just eliminates the A pawn. So he's just like, let's get rid of one pass pawn, one potential pass pawn here, reduce my losing chances significantly with that. But that means that Frolix still has an extra pawn on the king side. Did knight b5 seem like an intuitive move to you? For, for some reason, it seems a bit weird because you don't normally see your knight blocking pawns, right? Mm -hmm. You would prefer the knight on c6 and a pawn on b5. Yeah. So that felt a little bit off, but... Mm, F3 came. F3 yeah, came. finally we saw oh, the The knight F3. on b5 was stopping one of those hops to c3. I always struggle to stop all the hops. So... So now he's got the knight. The poor horsey here. Now he's got the knight under control. Does he have time to go attack b6 with his rook? Um, just play to d6. For example. Or to b7. Yeah, I, I don't even know which one, but. Right. But he does have time, but he has to be careful about rook b2 because just how white can attack the b pawn, so mm -hmm. can black. And now yeah. white's extra pawn is on the king side which makes it more likely to be a draw if things get traded off because all the pawns are on the same side. Yeah. Which is... All right. So Mons is going for rook e8 to e2. That's why he played h5. He got rid of the back rank instead of attacking the b pawn so that if white plays rook d6 and disconnects his rooks, he can play rook to e8 and try and get into e2. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, as we've seen, the h pawn could come and join the annoyance um, with h Join the annoyance. Nice. Okay, rook c8. That's because rook e8, knight c3 was annoying, I guess. <clears throat> okay, so I'm I'm happy for white that he was able knight to get that extra d4. pawn. d4. It covers all the other files. Ugh. 
It does. It does. It's a very powerful knight there. Uh, where um, do we get our counterplay now for black? Can we play rook d8 and give white trouble? I think rook d8 is the intuitive move here since you can't put your rook on c2 anymore. You might as well try to pin the knight, right? Um, because after rook d8, well, the knight isn't under immediate attack. And I guess black also doesn't have a way to follow up attacking the knight, so it's not the most useful move. He still played it, though, probably for a lack of better options. Well, after like seven minutes, white retreated the bishop to f3 in that pawn sack game that we had looked at, so we have not missed much over there. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, Let's see. Clicking around a little bit. Hammer's next game is against Dimitri Kolars. And Hammer is delivering a positional pawn sack here. Has Let's Hammer won all of his games today? I Probably. feel like he has. Um, I'm just going to quickly check on you that. Check that for us. Cool. Yeah, so he has two points, and this is his third game. So, so Hammer has a perfect score. So meanwhile, I'll point out that if Kolars took on d5 with the knight, then Hammer could maybe take back on e4. Although there's h3, so it's not totally simple, even that. But I guess queen e4, queen e4, bishop e4, rook h3, trade on d5, giving up the bishop bear by surprise, and then bishop c3. He gets the long diagonal and the rook on d5, and white would be much better. So, oh, but black didn't want to take with the c pawn either. If they did, their knight can't really move, and then white comes to the c3 diagonal as well. Hmm, this is... Deep, deep stuff from Hammer. Yeah. Although Kolars is absorbing it without burning out his clock, so. Right, so maybe, so this is slab defense. I'm, move 21. It seems a little too deep to be theory, even if you don't actually play the slab and you're trying to guess. Yeah. I um, think for the gnomes to win, it would be helpful for them, for Hammer, to put up some big numbers because he's like the highest rated player on their team by quite a bit today. Right. So they've they've invested some rating points in their top board. Which is one strategy to take um, versus the more balanced out approach. But Hammer has been doing very well so far, so it seems to be paying off. Yeah. Um, Frilic Mons. Mons got that H pawn into H3. There we go. That pawn <clears throat> is annoying. But black's going to need one more piece to make a threat. I mean, either the rook or the knight needs to get near the white king. Otherwise, it's nothing yet. But I'm, I think black has made progress in this position. Mm -hmm. um, his rook is behind the b pawn, which is the best place to be. His other rook is helping take control over the knight. If the knight moves, he could put more pressure on b5 or just trade off the rooks and win the pawn. His rook is on the second rank. White's king is now limited in mobility. I think mm -hmm. the drawing chances for black are getting pretty high at this point. Yeah, and rook takes b6 could help his case. I yeah. mean, one line I calculated was rook b1, rook b1, rook b1, rook takes d4, b6, and it didn't quite work for white. So Froelich couldn't convert with the knight sack, just pushing the b pawn. So instead he sacks the b pawn, looking to go to g1 with his knight, um, and capture the h3 pawn and then try and just work on the king side. So now Mons is going to have to find some other targets, some other tactics, because he can't, he can't go to two versus four. Right. Okay, so he's not going to trade off his rooks. Let's see. Let me yeah, see. I mean, now the other thing is that h3 pawn might eventually, like you said, be lost. Um, let's, let's click to another random position for a moment that looks interesting to me. Andre Diamant against Sebastian Mihailov. Okay. Um, Captain Casanova, right? The. Uh... Yeah. You find me offensive, I find you offensive for finding me offensive. Yep. Yeah. How could I forget him? And uh, Diamant looks like he's just destroying him i mean like i don't know that there's a word strong enough for how brutal this is about to get white has not even sacked anything for this position it looks like a position where you've sacked a piece to expose the opponent's king no yeah um, he just 
Diamant. Oh, you see him in the little like icon there, flexing. <laughs> yeah, exactly with his with his son. That's adorable. That's like I like that Captain Ca Captain Casanova always comments after again. Forgot about Bishop C two. Yeah, so bad. Those mother lovers act like they forgot about Bishop C two. Oh man. <laughs> So bad. Queen F8 looks okay. I don't know if anything ever looked okay in your position. Let's see if he's talking about move three or something. So bad. I, I, I'm trying to go back a lot here. To find where he was okay? Yes. <laughs> where did he play bishop c2? No, he forgot about bishop c2 move from 29, white. okay. Forgot about bishop c2. Queen F8 looks okay. Well, not so when he, the bishop's hanging. What? Yeah. So he was... shouldn't. Oh, he shouldn't have played bishop B3 on move 28. I think is okay. what he's saying. Just thinking maybe like if you play queen F8. Hmm. I mean, is his position just terrible? <laughs> yeah, I don't <laughs> no know why what he's is. saying. I had two drawn positions. Really unlucky in both. So annoying. Wow. That, <laughs> that's that's pretty funny. Well, we do know he's annoyed. Yeah. I mean, queen f8, bishop e4 still looks really strong for white, right? Yeah. I mean, he's um, all over black's light squares. If the bishop moves, he takes on a8. If the bishop trades, he takes with his queen, and then he's threatening, like, queen d5 or e6 with knight f7 and stuff. If somehow black could defend f7 with another piece, he I could know. play knight g5, go up a pawn, and then still play knight f7. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. And while you were looking at those, I went a little bit back, but I think it was a hard game to play the entire time. But yeah, it looks really I, I do tough. I feel him that it feels bad to lose two games in a row, so. I guess so. Yeah. Captain Casanova on tilt. That is true. But maybe you should go back to that baking game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm done. Um, we can move on to the next game. Yeah. All right. Oh, Bjorn so, Meyer. We haven't seen Hammer and Kolars before. played exactly the line. Okay, yeah. Let's go back to that game we were looking at. That it. we were thinking of going to this end game, but they went a move or two past what we had looked at with Kolars going after the G4 pawn. After Hammer gets the sort of dominant mm -hmm. rook on D5, dominant bishop on the long diagonal, it's still costing him a pawn in this end game on G4 because he just couldn't defend that pawn. Um, yeah. And now. He could cash in on G7, but again, it's giving Kolar's time to sort of sort out his problems. On right. Bishop G7, maybe plays like Bishop H2 and trades a rook. Yeah, and even if he does get that pawn, I mean, it's not the best pawn on the board. Yeah. But does say he doesn't get the extra pawn, does he have a way to limit Black's piece mobility? Because if he can't limit Black's piece mobility, then he might as well grab a pawn. Yeah. I guess the move that he might like to play would be something like rook b5 or rook b to d1. Um, if he wanted to try and keep pressure instead of the pawn. Right. Yeah, I think rook b5 looks interesting. Um, yeah. Because if he tries to protect his pawn, mm -hmm. say something like rook d7, then sure. he gets rook d1, and all of a yeah. sudden he's starting to limit black's pieces again. Now there's a little bit more of a tying up going on here. Oh, okay, he just took on g7. Where there's a little bit of pressure. Bishop g7. I could see this one petering out to a draw. Um... Ooh, four and a half to four and a half. Right, because they had just lost that game with Captain Casanova. Um, yeah. I think Hammer is definitely going to push. I, I guess it, it makes sense. He's white. He's supposed to be winning his games. Niklas Huschenbeth lost a game just now to Miguel Admiral, but it already disappeared as soon as I clicked on it. Yeah, I don't see it yeah. anymore. So too late to see it. Um, Frolic's still working on this end game we saw. He got that H3 pawn. He got it pretty cleanly. He's up the four against two. Hashimanke said one of my favorite comments in chat. Hammer looks ready to drop pawns, which is yeah. playing on the Eminem lyrics. That's right. That was a brilliancy, just saying. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, folks, if you want us to catch your jokes, just make them like references or puns off of Eminem lyrics, and we won't we won't miss what you're up to. Exactly. <laughs> um, okay, so we're looking back at Verolix's game. 
Yeah, it looks like he's doing a pretty nice job of it. Unless Rook G2 is mate, King H4, it is not. So yeah, he's doing it. He is. Um... And he's preparing a Rook Roller. I don't know if there's a more adult name for that checkmate, but Rook A7, Rook C8. Rook Roller. Better than getting Rick Rolled or worse? Probably equivalent. If you, if you get Rook Rollered, I think it's much worse because you don't want to get mated. That's true, but you also don't want to get Rick Rolled. So, let me just say. true. Um, but he I take, wasn't I take points over pride every time. That's fair. That's fair. Um, so, he's going to have two and a half out of three playing super well for the Mosquitoes. Jesus, two and a half out of three for a board four? King's, yeah. King's getting involved in the action. He wants to come to G5 and help out with basically what's going to become a mating attack from White in a moment. Oh, sorry. He might not have two and a half out of three. No. Okay. Well, is if you're he, wrong, if you're wrong, the commissioner will correct you. Okay. Sounds fair. All right. So they're saying that MDL's game has started and they want to see it. So let's have a okay. quick look. He's playing Danielle Forsen Esteban. So this is the board one versus board one matchup. Yeah. At the start of the season, Forsen Esteban was off to like, like he scored four out of four and he was performing, you know, hundreds of points above his 2,500 right. rating. I mean, the Barcelona Raptors were leading the central division at some point. Yeah. But you play um, enough games, you play enough games and like the averages average out a little bit and it's hard to... Right. Keep a I mean, perfect that's score going all season. Probability, yeah. So I, I do get it. Um, so MVL plays very quickly as usual. Mm -hmm. He played C four against the French, Alexandra. Do you fear that at all? C four on move two. I mean, if MVL played it, yes. But otherwise, no. I I think I looked a little bit into this line, and I enjoy playing against it. So. I mean, after you have to deal with the French exchange, any other line, you're happy to play. Okay. So, maybe I'm biased. So there's nothing, you fear, there's nothing you fear more than boredom. Exactly. But MBL did cho ch choose a sideline, mm -hmm. so that's an interesting choice on his part. Yeah. Um, Either preserving his opening prep for, you know, over-the-board tournaments against 2800s, or he thinks that Force and Esteban will will not be as comfortable with all the all the different sidelines out there. Yeah. Um, as um, we say this, um, Maxime Lagarde has just um, clinched the match for the Con Blitzstream. Um, well, they just won. As Black against Yuri Borisek, and the final position is worth looking at. Actually, look at this right? breakthrough on move thirty. I mean, all the black pieces are in place for a breakthrough, but. Queen D3. That's sweet. Okay. Just got here to this position. That is sweet. That is a beautiful move so to if, end with. So if pawn takes, pawn takes, and it's checkmate on the A file. So yeah. on queen B3, white moved the king away. Like, I'm not taking that queen. He's like, well, if you can't take my queen, how about now? He plays A3. So now on C takes B3, what is even the reason for white's resignation going back after king a1 jesus um, i mean you even have to like look ahead a move or two to even know why white resigned right. rook takes b3 threatening double check and mate so not a lot of moves that are going to stop double check and mate pawn takes rook takes king here rook here king here Wait. rook here after That's c fine. takes b3 why is yeah. the pawn on a3 Three. Oh, he played c3 not a3 i've got the wrong i got the wrong position somehow okay so he played c3 not a3 yeah yeah and yeah. if pawn takes b3 pawn takes b3 is still just made just, yeah exactly so he played c3 and then he just wants to take on b2 so white just resigned right yeah all right well that's brutal i love leaving the queen on b3 just like that that's really it is a nice way. It's fun. All and, he was missing was a way to put a piece on D three, and he would have <laughs> he would have crowned the game. You would have done your um, forking yeah. yourself. Shredded. All right, very well done. Um, 
Ooh. So back to MVL or something. I also wanted to mention that this end game that we've been watching between Hammer and, and Kolars, it did quickly peter out after he took on G7. Black just traded a rook on the D file and white doesn't have enough to work with. Right. Ends in a draw. Um... Okay. And so we're back to Maxime's game for a moment. Although, oh, and Frilic's opponent just resigned, Leo Mons. Yeah, he was, his so. king was cut off. He had two extra pawns, so definitely a win there. Even if his king wasn't cut off, it'd probably still be a win, so. Um, a cool opening from Maxime's teammate, who we haven't really seen yet today, Laurent Fressinet who managed to sack a pawn in, on e6 in a nice way here on move 13. Okay. Um, if the bishop takes, he's got bishop takes c6 check, um, which is pretty strong. Yep. Um, so he got black to play f takes e6, then he puts the queen here, attacks the knight, knight moves, and yeah. Oh, his position four. is great. He's easily going to grab one of those pawns back. Black's yeah. pawn structure looks terrible. It's lovely to and... leave black with this, with this stuff, huh? Yeah, and he's just stalling his, black's development a little bit. If black's pawn were back on f7 and white still had an e-pawn, black would have this bad pawn structure on the queen side with the split pawns, but a lot of the time they would get a little counterplay on the b-file or something, right? Right. Um, and here, the pawn sack means he's got control over b8. So he could even castle a queen side more safely here if he wanted to. And just overall, black just doesn't have much room to do anything. Yeah. Um, I'm looking as well back at MVL's game. Mm -hmm. All right. It hasn't, it hasn't made too much progress, but this is definitely one of the top mat match matchups of this game. So MVL's bishop placement on g3 is an interesting detail in this IQP. It's keeping this rook from coming out, right? Black's placing their mm -hmm. queen on c8 instead of c7 because they don't have room for that rook to come out. So I guess Black's pinning their hopes on playing bishop to f5, mm -hmm. kicking the queen and gaining a little more space or something. But I think... MVL has sort of like a nice positional compensation with his space here for the IQPs. Kind of got Black a little under yeah, a little bit of pressure. I agree. He just played h3, so he's making space for his bishop to go on h2 if he ever needs to, mm -hmm. or just blocking anything from coming to g4. Right. It's a very slow move, but it has a lot of different purposes behind it. Space for his king in the end game as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're right. If you have an isolated queen's pawn, you want to at least have very active pieces and a more close-off game. You don't want it to tamper off into an end game where you just have a worse pawn. Rook E to D8 from Force and Esteban. So he, so far, is not showing any future for his A8 rook. Um... We'll see oh, what comes of this. Maxime might be threatening some kind of like knight takes f7 move here. Those can come up sometimes. Um, so Esteban gets the, the bishop off of e7 where it was sort of like lined up for that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so he, Maxime plays so quickly. Yeah. He just moved rook c1 instantly. Yep. Um, I guess it's not a move where he has to calculate too much. Right. But my question here is how does Maxime make progress on this position? Because mm -hmm. it seems a little counterintuitive to trade off pieces when you have an isolated pawn. Yeah, I think he, he has a lot of space, but where does he go from here? I think I think he doesn't really want to trade off pieces actively himself, but if Black plays yeah. Bishop before or whatever, like he can't he can't not fight for some of these key squares in the center and so forth, right? If black trades on c3 at some point, at least he plays b, c3 and strengthens his center a little bit more. Yeah. Um, if not, the pieces can just face off against each other for a long time, possibly without any trades. That's, that's something that makes more sense, I guess. Um, so queen c4, like yep. you said, he's not trading. 
putting some more pressure on on d5 and f7 as soon as this bishop came off of e6. Um, so if the bishop came back to e6 to sort of counter that, then there might be a tactic against the bishop on b4. Like he might be able to play like knight takes d5. Right. And if the bishop goes to e1, he checks on yeah. e7 or something. You're right. It doesn't seem like he can put his bishop knight back. Takes knight d5, takes d5, bishop, bishop d5, bishop b4, bishop e6. And Maxime would win. So I think black can't come back, which means they're now in danger of losing control over the d5 square. Okay, so he just protected his bishop instead mm -hmm. of right. Anything Protects else? the bishop, yeah. Because if he if he dropped back with the bishop, then he doesn't have this control of the knight on c three because of the rook on e one, right? But it he seems just... like a three is going to force his bishop to go back anyways. Okay, Maybe so, so Maxine played bishop h four instead. Interesting. So now, is he threatening to take on d5 with his bishop? I would say yes. Yeah. Maybe yeah, not like a winning threat, but a little positional threat. Mm. Okay, okay, let's see. Bishop back to e6. We'll see how these tactics play out in a second. Right. But both of the... Forsten is trying to hold the, the position together. Yeah. All of his pieces are defending each other, but it might not be enough. It was enough. It was enough. Maxime drops back. Okay. So both players playing pretty well here. The Migs um, are up two points, by the way, um, after the last round. Whereas Bad and Bad yeah. and Snowballs and Norway Gnomes, the Snowball scored two and a half and drew the match equal. But um, And there's a one-point lead for the Mosquitoes. So the Migs... They could the possibly they could possibly play it calmly this round um, with I'm their two point lead. Yeah, I'm looking at the Alejandro Diaz game. Their fourth fours. Mm -hmm. um, that one's still was still pretty early. Not clear who. I mean, no decisive. Okay, that's where you would think that that uh, the Raptors would be really favored on board four, right? Would be Alvarado yeah. Diaz. Against Mark Andrea Morizzi, yeah. who's I mean, it's just still, it's, it's early, so I'm not saying that he's not going to win this. It's just not there yet to the mm -hmm. point where we need to move to it. But you're yeah. right; that is where they should be. That's where they should, you know. Okay, so Knight C4 is played by Morizzi, and there's potentially stuff hanging on D5, E6, or E4, or possibly all three of those squares. Yeah, that looked even though. It, it looked like a natural move to put your knight onto c4. Um, I would have calculated all of the takes first. Okay, yeah. knight takes e6 knight right away, e6. getting rid of that pesky bishop pair. And now he took on e4. Okay, so... So he took this way because he was thinking on f e4 that knight e3 was annoying. And then, you know, black, black suddenly cracks open white's dark squares and it gets pretty messy there. Since they're, they've got opposite colored bishops, but they're positions are both collapsing so knight e4 the queen defends on e3 and this leaves the pawn on d4 strong enough to limit the f6 bishop okay. for now queen takes e6 and then grab f3 okay now yeah. it's decisive you I think came so. just at the right time i think so very nicely done he's um he's checking it but i think it makes sense because if you just take on f3 well, black can't even play e5, so they can't crack your pawns. But I think you're right to grab the second pawn anyway. I, I do like winning as much material as possible. So isn't it human nature? <laughs> um, Good point, Tisvi. Knight d2 might have been even more annoying than that other line, although that other line was, was good too for black. So, All right, he grabs the pawn on e6, takes back on f3. Two clear pawns, so yeah, so black center was hanging there. Yep. And uh, that was probably pretty decisive. So that's a point that the Raptors are very likely to collect. So then let's right. click around on other boards, see how they're doing. We've got the Fresine game, which I was interested in. Yeah. Um, the pawn well, sack. Fresine looks very happy here. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Oh. So he finally got rid of one of black's doubled E pawns because he was ready to checkmate on the F file pretty much yeah um so it was white's turn to move here he's threatening queen f7 mm -hmm. and then rook takes c7 
So Black has to do something about that. Um, yeah. He can't move his rook because he loses his bishop on f8. That's upsetting. Right. You would want to cover the second row with yeah. the rook, but yeah. yeah. He can try bishop e7 so that the queen isn't attacking the bishop on d7, but then he loses his rook. So I don't see any other way to stop f7. Yeah, I mean, he could always look at like queen a3, rook b2, stuff like that. Like if you go queen a3, at least white can't take the rook on g8 just yet. I mean, they can probably play b3 and do it next move. I don't know how long it Right. Yeah, helps after bishop a3, queen f7, king d8, and then the rooks are traded off on d7, and then the rook is no longer pinning the pawn, so the queen hangs. Yeah. It's... He's resigned. He's he just resigned, resigned without another yeah. move. Um, so the so the MIGs now have eight points. They've got at least a tied match. Plus yep. they've got MVL playing for them. So, so I um, oh and Hammer just drew his game. That was a nice game for Fresine. Uh, the if you remember the Dimitri Kolars and Hammer game yep. that we that you said would probably end up in a draw. You were right about that one. Mm hmm. Yep, yep. All right, so Lyon Beast, the other mm -hmm. game we haven't seen is Blitz Stream. No, that's not in that match. That's just another French player. Um, so the other game in that match is here, Moussard, Anawel, playing black against Carles Diaz Camayonga. So if the Raptors are going to come mm -hmm. back, they're going to need a couple upsets here. Um, they're going to need Kamayanga to win this position against Jules Moussard. Um, so very close to equal position, I would think. And yeah. then they would need MVL to lose a complicated game to, to Forsen. Joe Bruin, did these two teams vote on these names? Um, I, I feel like they were suggested by chess.com, but maybe they did come up with their own team names. I, I thought that the teams come with suggestions of their own names. Oh, okay, okay. I would think that they would name themselves. I was trying to give them an out. An out if it's a bad or name? Or picking mosquitoes, but oh. they didn't get it. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Okay. Um, so, yeah, this game is not super interesting. There something going on that's a bit more fun to look at, or do we just want to go back to no MVL's game is I just I just click back to Maxime for now, but if uh if there's something else going on that better warrants our attention. Um at some point soon the mosquitoes and bears final round is also gonna heat up. So that'll right. become that'll become critical at some point soon. Oh, Greg said most of them came up with their own name, but they can veto if it's ridiculous. Right. Um, Greg, did you guys have to veto any names? <laughs> and can no, you say those names on say, air? <laughs> don't tell us the names. Just, just a simple yes or no suffice. No pressure. Um. Okay. Yeah. So, MVL and Force and Esteban still kind of twirling around, right? I mean, that bishop's come to h4 and g3 twice mm -hmm. now. Yep. The other bishops come to e6 a couple times. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so... I guess the the only thing that you can't take back, as Sam Shanklin wrote, are pawn moves. So I guess the the biggest question here is has playing a five, a four helped or hurt black? That's interesting. So he moved a five back on move twenty three to protect his bishop. Um, his bishop ended up moving around anyways, and because the pawn was on a4, he was able to go bishop a5, bishop c7. Mm -hmm. Although he probably could have done that anyways. Um, it looks yeah. to me like it's going to end up being a weakness later on in the game. Moves mm -hmm. like b5 are never going to be super attractive because of the weak c6 pawn. Yeah. And now his queen is tied on a7, protecting a4. That is a little awkward, and this rook c8 move is slightly odd. I guess he was worried about some some tactics coming up um, <clears throat> with the bishop on c7 maybe being loose at some point if white traded knights on d5 and then played something like knight takes f7. 
and going after the c7 bishop right um uh, and greg is saying that there were some names like, like the last vegas chess.com chess players he's giving a hypothetical but that's pretty funny to call your team name chess players i understand why that would be vetoed mm -hmm. yeah okay so yeah so rook c8 obviously if you were black you'd rather have played rook to d8 to coordinate with the queen and be like, yeah, I'm defending the A pawn, but we're actually pressuring D4, etc. Yeah. Yeah. Um, white making slow moves. This reminds me of a computer move, since it's so quiet mm -hmm. and so prophylactic. Yeah, I mean, Maxime is not in a hurry this game. He has like mm -hmm. probed and checked out a few different squares along the way. This what? game, why might this game be going over your head? This game is going over most people's head. This this one is pretty subtle, and the tactics are like a, a, a little bit below the surface. Right. I, I'm looking for other games that might be a bit more More heated. on our surface. Yeah, what about the game between um, Achilles O and Vroilich? That one seems a bit more interesting. Okay. Huh, some kind of weird gambit in the Berlin? An interesting Berlin. Let's see how, how to make this gambit for white. So you don't take back on e5. That's the way? Okay. And then you don't take back on d4 either if you want to be down two pawns, I guess. This is... This is intense. <laughs> sure <laughs> to me. is. Uh, white's disregard for their pawns is uh, pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. Feliz. He played another <laughs> game earlier today where he was also showing no Feliz, regard for his I think Feliz pawns. is a female since she has a W title. She has a W title? Yeah. I don't see the... Oh, I do see the title. Um, but... <laughs> she plays very aggressively. I she appreciate it. She does play it. very aggressively, yeah. I think that she previously played the game which was a double king pawn where she was black and sacrificed um sacrifice her b pawn in the opening against quinton and she eventually beat him oh we missed that game how it ended because he spent like 10 minutes retreating his bishop and then we moved on but it was brutal oh man we'll have to look at it at some point Got it. so that was the one game she's won until now yeah um, well she's bored four i mean if you win oh no she's bored game... three no, she... no no she's bored four she is bored four yeah, Leon Moss right. is four. Three. So she's so four, that's four. So if she scored one point before the final round, even like you're very yeah. satisfied. So she's you're doing a great satisfied. job as a board four. Let's see if she can yeah. get another point here. Um, yeah. Does knight take step seven work? That looks like it's, it should have some discovery attacks. Looks playable. If king f seven, bishop g five, check mm -hmm. knight f six, bishop takes f six, and uh, white's in good shape. Yeah. I think we're going to see some fireworks here. All right. That we were not seeing in the MVL game. So <laughs> we had yeah. to scoot on here for a little bit. Uh, Crafty Raph also likes Knight Takes F7. Yeah, I think that looks super terrifying. Um, somebody's talking about Hammer's game. Wow. Oh, with so what, I mean, and Does Hammer. Black have alternative moves after Knight F7 other than taking it? Queen d7. Queen d7. Queen h4. Ooh. These moves are not good looking. Mm -mm. Queen d7 blocks in those queenside pieces more, right? And the queen's yeah. now on the f6 fork possibility in the air. Right. Um, yeah. And then I would probably play rook e1 for white, leaving everything hanging there. If queen f7 put the rook on e8 and black's all tied up. Um, I, I, I glanced. Nine. She played knight f7 and queen yeah. e7. Now it's her move. So yep. my first instinct here is rook to e1. And my other instinct is that she's going to kill this guy despite how well Furlick has played and the fact that we just saw him beat a GM last round. Why do you like rook e1? To develop my last piece and to play rook e8. So what happens after queen takes f7? I play rook e8 anyway. Okay, That's and then I... if I can't take it because you play knight f6, all right, yeah, yeah, tactical blows happen. That's what I came to do, right? 
yeah. came to get down. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, I do actually like Rookie One. Um, so let, let's see how she's going to play it. Then Maybe White's can... threatening something like Bishop H6 eventually, right? To just trade queens and black can resign. Um, and also, I took a quick peek at some of what happened in her previous game that I would like to look at at some point, and I can tell you for sure this is a violent woman. She <laughs> will not shy away from moves like knight f7 and rook e8. <laughs> oh man, so uh, feeling yeah. a little bit bad for for her opponents here, the victims. I I would be beyond worried for for like right now. Like Aww. I would say she's like. She's like gearing up, you know, winding up, ready for a uh, game of the week, if possible. Here, the Berlin Bears mascot looks pretty terrifying as well. And that not gonna lie. that opening pawn sacrificing that she did—that was um, pretty disrespectful <laughs> or hardcore. I mean, it was that was intense. It was, and I this is actually her first game in the season, her first matchup in the season so she's doing very well so far maybe we're going to see her more yeah. at board four frolic is cashing in his queen for whatever he can still get for her she might be three pieces which would be good enough and then she'll be like why didn't i play rookie eight let's see well she can still play rookie one here with the same idea it's a little bit slower but the fun thing is that black's pieces are super passive right but now but now on rookie one. one black can move this bishop on c8 maybe okay so it doesn't want to go to wow, e6 rookie one huh wow that's cool rookie one okay so if bishop e6 then probably rookie six queen e6 knight e3 and white's winning or knight b6 i guess also yeah so rookie one no bishop e6 king h8 um right so that there's no more fork threats on f6 that makes sense um and then the knight can take on c7 because it's a discovery attack mm -hmm. and if the queen takes back the knight hangs jeez yeah knight c7 there, is there's pretty just sweet. so many options here um, I know people are people are giving a lot of other variations in the chat as well. Yeah, yeah. This is a position with lots of variations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Knight C7, Alex. I like that. Not sure what to do for black after that move. Right. Gets messy. Gets is there messy. any way she can mess this up? Is the more Yeah, I guess if she miscalculates something. Yeah certainly possible i mean yeah. i mean one thing is like instead of rookie one the more obvious move is like knight e7 or f6 or something and then black mm -hmm. takes it and you take on f7 and the king takes it and now you've got three minor pieces and a pawn against the queen and it's not it's not looking that like easy or good for white yeah there may be some chances still since black's not done developing so she could she could be considering this i mean the migraines have won their match Oh, migraines won their match we what? missed we missed something from mvl well is mvl oh yeah mvl has won his game so maybe let's just go look over what happened yeah so i passed over a little maneuvering and got to move 37. yep and here mvl managed to just take the pawn on a4 you said that would end up being we a weakness when i asked you what weakness. you thought of that pawn you said more likely a problem wait but why did he play rookie d8 on move 37 instead of protecting the pawn instead of protecting the pawn it could play bishop takes c3 or just move the bishop anywhere yeah. is that a simple plunder um, i mean it's not clear what pressure maxine was putting on him i mean there's a lot of little funny wait, things I mean, happening in the background one is not the scariest move i've seen all right day. it doesn't seem like that's threatening a breakthrough right yeah exactly the only thing it's threatening is knight a4 <laughs> And then no. he gets the knight to c5. And then black hung the pawn on b7 and had enough of it. Maybe just like it was just too much pressure. He couldn't like hang out with MBL that long. It's like just being around this guy is starting to freak me out. Yeah, but Esteban has, was playing very well before. It That's seems true. like he choked. I mean, yeah, he's handled there's... strong players before. Yeah, but I, I like that you're, you're coming up with some 
potential there. Um, I just, I feel bad that he just hung the pawn that easily. It didn't seem like it was necessary. Okay, so um, Feliz um, has gone for the queen. Okay, and some uh, real Dodgerin, we see you giving the giving the the line there. Maybe we could look at it after, but let's also try to figure out what's going on in the current game so we don't backtrack too much. Although obviously we love it when you guys okay. try to think about these. So she played knight e seven instead of knight f six. That way, after taking the queen, there's a discovered check for a moment here with bishop d six check. And now, so that collects one pawn for her. There's still work to be done, though. Queen b3 with the idea of bishop b6, queen b7. Uh -huh. um, so black wants to play king g7, presumably, and have white retreat their bishop. Nope. Frolic is coming out the cage. Okay, so she probably had, okay, not probably, she definitely had a better variation. Mm -hmm. um she's still better so looking at the piece count after black takes on d6 um black has a rook and a knight and two bishops knight and two bishops a queen and a rook yeah if so, black takes with the knight then they give up queen c7 check which i don't think you can you can concede so right. black has to double the pawns there still minor pieces are so good right so what will be very important here is how coordinated the minor pieces are and whether they can get active. Yeah, um, and just rook b2 getting active. This, this is not... Oh, man, she had such a nice position, but again, she still does, so it's just too soon to say the game was messed up. Yeah, if rook e6, then rook b1's back rank mate, mm -hmm. so she doesn't, have, she doesn't have the simple tactic here. Right. Yeah. G3, getting rid of back rank mate. Logical. So yep. now introducing this rookie six threat. And if bishop e5, she could go for f4. So Froelich needs to solve the e-file here. One option is knight to g7, but that concedes the d6 pawn and maybe the seventh rank, queen c7, queen a7. Mm-hmm might be annoying to try and deal with that a pawn with all the minor pieces clumped on the king side. Yeah. I mean, what Frolic needs to do is like attack white's king somehow. That's what you got to do with all the minor pieces. You got to attack. The only problem is if you move any of the minor pieces from around the king, then you're going to start dropping pawns. And once you get one pawn that's hanging and you're in check, then it's dominoes. Yeah. Hi, LDS Jedi Knight and Tag Bond. Good to see you guys in the chat. Okay, so, so let's let's evaluate this situation for the match. The Berlin Bears are down by one point in this last round. So any, so they want to they want to come back up here. They've got Leon Mons playing against Quinton Ducarmon, and it looks like Mons has sacked a pawn with an interesting position, possibly some pressure, hard to evaluate this quickly. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, at the moment, his bishop looks annoying and like the black king side is slightly weakened. That's Not true. Looking um, elsewhere, which other, which other games are theirs? Hushin Beth and Klein. Yep, and also just making baby legs. Baby legs, that's right. Yeah. How do I ever forget his username? Every time I remember it, I'm like, how did I forget that? Right, right, right. Baby legs. Baby legs. Board one for the Bears in his first appearance on our stream today. How's he doing? He's got a pretty like well protected king at least. That king is locked away like princess yep. in a fairy tale and it didn't look the, i mean it's locked away but if we could teleport that queen over to g6 actually it's still locked away there exactly it's very nice um wow these bishops sorry the bishop on e4 is a little awkward because he's blocked by his own pawn yeah but yeah. at least it also has control of the h1 to a8 diagonal he's so white is trying to trade queens here yeah his a3 pawn was in some danger 
and yeah. I guess we all agreed that Black's king was safe, so like the queens aren't especially helping white if the Black king is really safe. Right. Which is why Eric Braun just Eric keeps declines the it. Yeah, I think he was also worried that in some case he wouldn't have enough to win with because like mm -hmm. the weakness to attack is like c2 but it's defended by a bishop but in his optimism is he facing some danger from rook to d7 i mean basically he was not satisfied with you know a pleasant end game he wanted more yeah so he I doesn't the... want to allow rook d7 maybe he should just change his mind and trade the queens off yeah there we go yeah thank you thank you i guess Trade the flip side of having your king well locked away is like it's safe in the middle game but it's not active in the end game right like that black king probably doesn't get to the center as fast as the white king going through f2 and e3 mm -hmm. so... okay well now that they traded off um yeah who do you prefer in this position i think the white... mosquitoes because He's got this active rook. He wants to go maybe like rook a7, and he's going to bring his king in first. So I guess I'd right. have to say white, despite the worst pawn structure. Yeah, I guess if white is able to put pressure on that a pawn, potentially collect it, and black's pieces need to be tied to defending the pass pawn, then the ugly pawn structure is not so much of an issue. Mm -hmm. um, most likely... This game will probably end up in a draw. Oh, that's clever. He's headed to a4, not c5. Nice. I was going to say that if he hung out on c5, white eventually has a plan of like bishop d3, a4, bishop b5. I've lost end games like that before where like Aww. I just can't defend my a pawn at the end. Yeah, my life is full of sad end games. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you're co doing commentary, it seems like you're the endgame pro. So you've definitely learned from your mistakes, and that's what's most important. That is important. I hope it's true. Mm -hmm. does, but... does Black have anything tricky here? I. Oh, so... his, king is, his king is so poorly placed. He can't do anything. Yeah. So I think Black's idea is rook a4. He defends the a pawn, wins the a3 pawn, and so Admiral is now thinking bishop h5 to g6, then king to h8, and then he wants to play rook to a8. Mm -hmm. And it'll be very hard to stop bishop f7. Also, Rolik lost. Berlin won a game. So the game we were looking at where we thought Feliz was going to win, she did she, in the ending. It just took a little bit longer. She did win this one in the end game. Okay, so he, in the position we were looking at, he did play... He did play knight to g7 to defend the e-file, even though that was kind of a passive square for the knight. Queen c7 happened, and instead of queen a7, she first played a5. That's very classy. She's like, that a-pawn's not getting away from the queen, so let's move our a-pawn up the board first, make it a big threat, and Frolic's one tempo slower to get counterplay with rook c2 and d3 if she hasn't yet taken on a7. Yeah. She got that extra a six edge there with the pass pawn. Queen c six, bishop f five, right. So he collects the c pawn. She collects the a pawn. Queen to b seven. D three and just blundering this. So what's I mean, up with that? He didn't play d three and right. she played something 96. like ninety six. 96 to block that threat a6 is still terrifying which is D3. nice that she pushed her a pawn so quickly like you pointed a7, out earlier d2 rook rook f1 rook c1 it still feels like the game's being played in that position i don't know if it looks totally decisive yeah, I mean, to it, other it was people a, it wasn't resignable you're right after d3 a7, D2, that's the line you're That's in. why it was so classy and important that she moved her A pawn before taking on A7. Because this whole position, she would basically be one tempo down if she just played Queen A7, Rook C2 at the beginning. Right. And I think we can see that if Black played, like, let's say, Knight E6 and she played A6, D3, like, it's clearly a position that's hanging by one tempo. Yeah. Um. Wow. Well, that's what the Bears needed. That's what they needed. They tie up the Mosquitoes with two games left. 
Okay, so the two games left. And she them. scored two out of four in her first match from board no, four. No, she's doing amazing. They're going to put her back in for sure. Um, ooh. All right, what? what's up with baby legs? Yeah, I just came here. Bishop d5 was just played, which looks terrifying for white. Um, even though white was able to to be an extra pawn here. Oh, God, now the bishop's not so good on g6. It's like who's trapping who, like again and again this game. Because now, yeah, just take G2 right away. if black played rook g2 check, right? Then again, after king h3, it's like black who's trapped with a rook h5 mate. So bishop g2, what is going on? Now the king can escape rook h5, rook h4 by going out to f3. And then bishop h5 check, king to e3. This is weird. This is weird. This, this end game is very weird. Yeah. I don't know um, who's better. Do you do you have any kind of instinct? Well, instinctually, I think black is better I just Black's because up. I don't see black getting checkmated right away. And mm -hmm. if he doesn't get checkmated, then he's going to have his king close to white's king and a ton of discovery checks. Not to mention that he has way more time. Well, not way more, but 50 seconds to 20 is mm -hmm. significant enough. Um, and he also has that past e pawn. Right. Is it time to use the past e pawn, or is rook g7 annoying? Does black need to keep fighting for activity with some bishop f3, bishop e4, rook g2? He also has bishop e4 check if he just wants to grab the f5 pawn. Mm -hmm. um, and then his king will be close and start pushing. Okay, he played king g4. Here comes the king, looking for a mating net. Yeah. Looking for a mate. The bears bite back. I totally agree. The bears are vicious. Notice the 10 seconds for white. So time is potentially a big factor in this game. All right. For sure. Admiral, like, gets the black king to sort of at least get in the way of the rook. But two seconds. He's got to move something. And now, tell me, what's stopping the e pawn? Mm, a prayer? <laughs> a bishop sack on e2, I guess? Uh oh. It's halfway there. Oh, yeah. Living on a prayer. This pawn's about to be like 78% of the way there, but okay, rook h1 is a good <laughs> yeah, threat too. Yeah, thanks for correcting me. <laughs> um, that was quite the comeback. Man, and then just switching back to the checkmating idea. That's a great game by Braun, and the this is a comeback for the Bears. They were down going to the last round. Yep. Eight, seven. Oh, man. But my prediction that they would upset the mosquitoes is finally bearing out. Oh, nine to seven. Wow. The Marseille migraines got nine to seven. Wait, no, yep. the Berlin Bears, are you saying a game just ended? Another game just ended somewhere. Huschenbeth beat Klein. Oh, Black okay. one with a smothered mate. Oh. Yeah. What are their usernames that you're looking at? Um, David Klein versus GM Huschenbeth. Okay. Oh, got it. I don't know if it oh disappeared for the moment it ended, but it looks like he got Philidor's legacy. I saw, I saw in a okay. previous uh, stream. Beautiful. I saw in a previous stream a couple days ago that uh, there was a match where there was some discussion about what this knight f two knight h three smothered mate thing is called. Um, okay. But uh, certainly one of the most famous checkmates that we've got. Definitely, and and Nicholas Husenbeth. This is the second beautiful game we're seeing from him. The other one we were talking about how it's eligible for game of the week. That's so, right. Nicely done. Now the only <sighs> matchup left, Baden Baden and Norway Gnomes tied at six and a half. Um, these games are really heating up. So the Bears scored three and a half out of four this round. That's incredible. All right. Which one do you want to go to first? Board... Let's do... Um, uh, Andre Diamant's game. Okay. That one is super heated. So Larzo and Zuga Zwando. I see it. I see it. Um, so White's trying to get a knockout before Black develops. Yeah. So is the, the material count is actually equal, which I thought White was down some pawns because the way they were structured at first. But Material is equal. If it's an endgame, black is better because white has a nasty pawn structure. That yeah. uh, being said, I don't think black's going to get out of this. 
because uh, if the queen moves somewhere like e6, knight c7 is a threat. If the queen moves too far, then f6 is hanging. Okay, queen e5, that was the next option I was going to look at. Okay, defending f6, mm -hmm. saving the queen, not allowing knight c7. Right. Bishop takes f4. Well, that's that's an easy way to just win material. Would you take on h7 or f6 here? I guess I like h7. Oh, I like f6 too. <laughs> Basically, that trade on f8 looked good. Yes. I All right, you're... Lars Hauge. He All right. could, he oh, could okay, do it. There's also the red. Is this the last game? Oof. Yeah. Uh, well, one other game just finished. Like, as we were watching this, Dimitri Kolar oh, took more out games. Christian Stuvik home to give the Snowballs a one point lead. Okay. Um, some so there's kinda, Captain Casanova some and. Some kind of fancy tactic getting a promotion. So, we got two games left Casanova and Ina Agrest. They've got a madness position here. But the gnomes look better in both two positions they have left. So they could still come back I on this one. I think they can they can win this game. Um, I'm not sure yet if Ina Agress has any counterplay, but the open H file and her king look pretty okay so far. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I guess she's got some counterplay. She's played B5 to crack that side, and she's got a very strong. King's Indian bishops. So it's, I would say it's just like a random mess basically at this point. Like you don't know who's better or worse in these kind of positions. All you but know is that. Which king do you like better? The here? only thing I know is that Danya's going to win this game. <laughs> <laughs> okay, team captain. No, no bias there. <laughs> Um, I... No, I've got no idea. I mean, this bishop could come to e6 at some point. I was thinking of like some kind of like knight b5 thing to distract the knight on c7 and then play bishop e6 maybe. But now, I mean, you can't move the knight on c3 very well. Uh... Uh, any piece could go anywhere, and I don't know if I would be surprised. <laughs> I wonder if I like White's position because I'm seeing it from White's perspective. Mm, I don't maybe. know if that that's happened to you when there there are positions where both sides are attacking, but the first one you see is the one you like better. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> you like first identify with them and see like their a threat of theirs first. Yeah, you see how much space they have, how active their pieces are, and then when I flip and look from Ina's perspective, I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, okay. White's king looks a little shaky from her point of view as well. Honestly, I couldn't even tell if I was looking from White's perspective, Black's perspective, or from the side. It's just so disorienting to me when I see these things. Oh, man. Um, um, I don't know. Okay. I guess I guess Ina didn't want to go knight b5 because of bishop e6, so she's planning to play rook b5. And Lars is now in a queen versus rook and bishop ending, oh, where yeah. the bishop can't move. And the rook can't move, so... He didn't take on f6 or h7. He crept in with the queen. Knight to b6 tactic. Oh, la, la. Wow. And it collected the queen, and the game goes on. I think with that pawn on b6, black is still in a very tough spot to try and ever get out of here. I mean, he um, can't move either piece, but I guess the yeah. queen also can't move in that case. So White's going to advance Oscar the game. A pawn. Somebody give this man an Oscar. Yeah, Jesus. I agree, Milkman. <laughs> I guess there's a plan for White to advance the pawn to A6, basically, right? Um, right. And depending on what square the queens are on, if Black takes with the pawn, you might have, like, queen E4 check and take the rook. If Black takes with the rook, you'll take the bishop. Beautiful. Oh, this is such a nice Yeah, queen game. G8. So if the king goes to F5, right, then you play A6, and you've got queen D5 check. Right. So king h6 might be slightly preferable. Okay. King h6. Um, does a6 still work? It's still after playable. King takes it... a6. Oh, well, now, okay, now it's going to be over. We're going to have our answer. Hang on. We just saw king f5. Okay, never mind. Now a6 certainly works. Yeah. Nothing can take that poor pawn. Not that poor pawn, that valiant, strong pawn. Yeah, with the king on h6, I mean, he played king f5. He must have seen something bad with king on h6, but I'm not quite sure what it was. Maybe it was Zugzwang, Alexandra. Zugzwang. If his king goes to h6, 
White can just mark time with his king on like G2, I mean on, on H2, G1 or something? Um, Maybe. Oh, because if the king goes to H5, he gets mated. Yeah. Right. And then nothing else can move. That's true. That's Maybe true. Maybe something like that. Wow. So now I would play A7 and then just bring the white queen to B8. It's a very entombing way to, yes. to finish it off. What's happening on the other one? Queen C4. Okay, two. Captain Casanova, that is a more decisive game. Greg, okay. you have a point. We're something, there now. Something just good. happened on B5. Let's see. The knight took, even though white had it covered. Queen D5, Queen B5. Wow. Okay. So Ina's going for it. She's saying those rooks are not particularly good. Right. After rook g6, they're a little bit better because they can at least sack on g7 and get stuff going. Yeah, so what is the material here? Um, Sebastian has it's a like rook an exchange for sack. an exchange sack. Okay. He takes four. Now he's thinking about queen g6, but then there's queen d3, queen d3, knight d3, rook hg2. So queen g6 is possible. He doesn't have to take back I just on wouldn't B4. do it with 30 seconds. I would just take back the knight. Well, she's got 20. If he could analyze some, some variation just like for 5 or 10 seconds, get a little bit ahead okay, of her I, in I some line. I won't be a scaredy attack, a scaredy cat. Maybe you're right. You should go for it, but... Oh, there's rook a7 at the end. That doesn't work. So, yeah, okay, he, he should not. Took. He took. Okay. I'm, I'm I see queen that. e3 check, people. Come on. Come on. So, a3 is looking scary here. a3 is looking scary. Got to get ready for rook g7. Because rook okay. g7 is pretty scary too, right? Then queen h7 and stuff. Yep. All right, king a2 looks fine. No more checks, unfortunately. Rook a7 covering that. Queen c8 has got to be good. No c4. It's got to be even better, maybe. Oh, this is looking bad for Ina. Her, her, yeah. She can't give any more checks now, and there's going to be some back rank. Yeah, something. it's like... It's surprising that she didn't play rook h8. And I think I've confirmed that rook h8 was winning to myself just now. Oh gosh, rook c7 would be a big blunder. Into the end game they go. The oh, other game just simplified. The other game was decided, and the match is seven and a half, seven and a half. So this is the last, this is the last game. half point. If she can somehow pull off the miracle draw here. Yeah. Oh, not, rook, f, oh. rook f4 check. Was pretty good taking an a4 as well. Yeah, but I guess but she didn't even now need it. The king is this way be she got both. Pinned. Oh, but now there's b2 hanging. Right? See, this was the. I thought that she could just sack both of her rooks on g7, trade off the pieces, and then take on a4. Oh, did she just have that last move? But he, he oh, had that. But... I'm sorry, did he just have it? I, yeah, I don't know which side I, of the I board thought, we're I on. I could have pinned the bishop, but again, they're moving so fast, it's hard to. To go over it. This is also winning for for him. It does seem she's good. Rook trying. F7. She's trying to keep up yeah. Rook F7 will win the match for the gnomes. Mm -hmm. He seized his moment, Alexandra. He finally he did, seized finally. the moment with his... I finally. guess he had four shots. He had four shots, not one. Yeah, much more than Eminem did, but, but whatever. Teach their own. But, you know, I guess it's easier to seize it when you got four. I'm curious if he's going to comment something again like he always yeah. does, or he doesn't Yeah, comment. like, easy, was yeah. always oh, winning. I hope not. That would be so obnoxious. <laughs> GG, oh, easy. Yeah, GG, get wrecked, noob. <laughs> Full on. Get wrecked, noob. Rooks are good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so... So I... the gnomes, I guess, consolidate first place in the division, right? Yes, they do. The mosquitoes don't make any progress because they lose to the bears. So I wonder what's happening to like the sort of like third and fourth place position right. in the league right now. Um, right. Well, have a quick the, look at where the yeah. standings might be at. Um, it's pretty close, but the mosquitoes, the snowballs, and the raptors, second, third, and fourth place teams all lose. Which means it's the French teams like moving moving up into like fourth place probably, sort of trying to catch up passing the Raptors maybe and trying to catch up with the snowballs. Yeah. Um the mosquitoes were were pretty close. They're probably still gonna be in the top four. Yeah, they'll probably still be second even since the snowballs and raptors lost. 
right and marseille and blitzstreams are too far behind so the blitzstream get 21 points so they go to 134 oh, that is Greg not just bad up updated the, the standings that is not bad that's fast there it is 134 137 135 so the blitzstream are like right there with the second and third place teams now yeah and the gnomes oh. have a massive advantage going into week nine Barcelona fell quite a bit. I feel bad for them. They had such a strong start. And it was a close and it was a close match. These matches were super close other than the Blitzstream. Yeah. Who reaped all the points today? Um whew, yeah. Well, that was a very close match. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Um it also if you guys enjoyed this, you should stay around because Anna Rudolph, who was commentating on the earlier session, is actually going to have a stream, and we're going to raid her. Cool. So stick around, guys. Save. And one other piece of fun for anyone who wants to watch it is this game I just pasted into chat. You guys, you want to see just a little bit of violence, learn a quick thing or two about development and double king pawn open games in chess. Um, check that game out. Um. And yeah, so uh, sorry, I was just reading our Slack group. Um, That's cool. <laughs> Me too. All right. Well, hopefully you guys had fun. Let us know in the comments if there was something unexpected today or that you were happy about. Thank you guys, Mod Squad, for being here and helping out with everything. Greg, yeah. you're always here. You're you're an angel helping everybody. Crazy coffee man. I don't know if T is still here, but both of you guys were helping for a long time. Chess win, Max. Hopefully I'm not missing anybody. Thank you guys for watching. All right. Cool. Thank you, Alexandra. It was so fun doing this with you today. And uh, yeah, lots of fun. Uh, everybody stick around because we will soon have Anna Rudolph. Yeah.